Welcome, welcome oh. to another hump oh. day Q&A. Music's over. Go away. Go back, Dash. Hang out over there. We've seen enough uh, animated dashes on the uh, 19 days or 17 days of Flutter already. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a interesting. Few, it's been a busy, busy time. Fascinating. In the lead yeah. up to our grand event. <laughs> it, a week from today. I was just commenting moments ago yeah. that it's it's exactly one week ago now. Well, one week from now. This will have been a week ago. Okay, I'm gonna just shut up. The caffeine's not kicked in yet. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, Simon. Just say, just, uh, hey, Randall. Right. Uh, oh yeah. Hey, bro. There's, there's a few people in chat. Uh, yep. 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 Hi, everyone. Right. Hi. Um, so uh, let's let's uh, <laughs> let's get on with the, the the quick bit that we have to do every every stream, and then we'll we'll get to the the, the good bits, I guess. Yes, right. well, it's all good. It's well, all good. Come on. Well, yeah. So, uh, do notes, Randall. I'll let you do this bit. Oh yeah. So uh, the the short version of it is you've heard this before, and it basically it's use common sense. Okay, be nice. Don't post any adult content. Uh, don't advertise or promote anything. This is our show, not your show. You, we get to promote, but you don't. That's just the way it works. <laughs> and. Uh, don't post the same thing again and again. If you post the same question twice, I take your first question out of the queue and then you lose your spot. So just post one question. Be aware that if you do it correctly and put Q colon in front of it, I will see it. Really, I'm watching very, very, very close. So don't uh, spam. Uh, no harassment is tolerated. We have buttons we can press here to immediately take you off the stream. So... Just don't be stupid. But otherwise, have fun. This is a great show. We have fun doing it, or we would do it week after week. Indeed. And uh, we are uh, getting your questions answered and talking to cool people all the time. Uh, Simon, enough of uh, do's and don'ts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a great time is the key thing. Yeah. Uh, I'll introduce myself. My name is Simon Lightfoot, a Flutter Community Leader and CTO of Dev Angels London. And you can follow me on Twitter at Dare Angels London. Scott will be joining us later, and he's a GDG organizer of Cleveland, another community leader. And Randall, please introduce yourself. I'm a, a Dart and Flutter Google developer expert, which means I get to spend a lot of time talking to people about how to make their Dart and Flutter code work better and give presentations all the time, like this. Uh, this counts for GDE points, so here I am. Uh, and uh, and uh, But it's a, it's a great job. It's... Uh, I like to call it unpaid DevRel, but uh, it gets paid back in other ways. I get to contribute. I get to learn. I get to talk to new people all the time. Uh, I get to travel around the world, being at uh, virtual events all the time. And it's just been great. So I really enjoy it. And they give out swag. Look, there it says expert yeah, right there. Say, expert, we'll to, right? That's a rare thing. It's very nice. We'll so, to, yeah, um, actually, did, your question's I'm gonna answered. Look, I'm going to have to look at mine, time. actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, we have some guests with us. Uh, so Salih will be joining us later, but right now we have Danielle. Danielle. Hi, everyone. Hi, Danielle. Glad to be back. 
Hey, Daniel. Hi. Is your connection bad or is that me? I don't well, she, know. She's stuttering or the video yeah. is stuttering. Yes. The video is stuttering. Anyway, right. I'll let you have a fiddle with that. And uh, Scott's just joined us. Hey, Scott. Welcome. Hey. Hey, hey. Scott. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Uh, he yes. Is Can you right. hear me now? Okay. Loud, loud, I loud do. And clear. Yes. Wonderful. Yes, I uh, appear to have done something bad to my laptop. It started screaming with a loud beeping and flashing lights all over the place. And oh. mm. we're here now. Actually, I want to. I want to see. So, so here. So, I, I, I just got my swag box today. I was quite, quite impressed. So we got. Uh, yeah. So we got a little swear. Love a swear. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ah, uh, see, see. Here's, here's the thing. Mine doesn't say expert. Mm. So that's because you're yeah. uh, you're a fit, an official GDE, so you get that mm -hmm. extra expert thing right on the side. Yeah. Um. What else do we? What else do we get? Um, I should go check to see if mine's arrived. Well, like this. This is quite cool. This, this is kind of like a a lockable a lockable. You can't water, see. Yeah. A lockable water bottle. It has like a little right. lock on the front that kind of stops you from opening. I just products. got this right. little one from Cloud. Cool. Oh, this is interesting. Um, it's glass as well. So that's kind of nice. And, and, uh, and, a, and, and a little uh, fanny pack. Is that Hers Herschel? I don't know. Is that is that a well-known brand? I have no idea. Anyway, it's um, not known yeah, to like me. A, like a like a little man bag kind of thing. It would yeah go around your waist or maybe you can put it around your so top it, there. It, it's a little redundant to a guy who normally wears 40 pockets when he leaves the front yeah. door because I have eight pockets in my pants. I have uh, 35 pockets in my coat. I don't need any more. Scotty Vest, thank you very much for I your support over the years. I have also heard that those fanny packs are a very easy way to identify an American abroad. Yes. We're the um, only ones wearing them. No, yeah. but if, it's the, if it is, I mean, I think that's a lot for a lot of uh when anyone's abroad, I think there's like you want to keep something close to you, not in your pocket, like zipped up, right? I think that's yeah. kind of a common practice. But also, these uh, we call them man bags when it, when a guy has a bag like that. So instead of a handbag, which is a woman thing, it's like <laughs> man bag because it's like more manly. <laughs> man first. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. Let's. Uh, and and uh, Matthew, no, no, it's they're no. not going to be cool again. They weren't cool in the first place. <laughs> I'm going to make so much fun of you the next time you're in Zoom for that one, Matthew. Right. <laughs> so we already have some questions lined up, I think. We'll oh, we do. Yeah. yeah um, Eight, nine. The issue with nine. the laptop, I can't see the list of questions. That's so. fine. That's fine. We'll, 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 we'll queue them up and then you can read them. There you go. Uh, no, this one's dead. Sorry. I should oh, this one's up. dead. All yeah. right. I'm not doing my job yet. I'm already failing All on right. my job. Right. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Is that the first one? Yeah. That's the first one. Let's just get going. Yeah. Mohammed Let's says, see. "What are the methods that are called when navigating back to a back to a specific screen?" Yeah. Um, no. Mm, that's to the, now when navigating to a specific screen or back to a specific screen because that almost sounds like a pop until. But the thing is, a screen. Now, I just want to be clear, right? right hold on. Hold on. I think there's yeah. two points, two ways to take this. One is about the navigation. The other one is about the widgets. And I think this is taken from a widget, I think, perspective, because this is a very common question, which is when when you start, you think of of like a widget being like a screen, like like on, on Android, you have an activity, which is very much a, a, full, like a full screen component in, in essence. And I think the problem here is like, what are the methods called? There is no specific method to say, your your come back from the background or you've you've popped right like that it's a widget like any other your screen is right so i think the 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 other answer to that is also if it's maintaining state you know like it'll be it's already so that's a good question i don't remember if the standard navigator keeps them in the keeps them active or it does deactivate them i think it might deactivate them when you get the activate method called on the stateful widget we should try it. Let's try it. I've, I've forgotten. It's right. been that long since I've seen um, So, yeah, let me uh, I'll have a, see if I can quickly play around with that. But I guess, um, you know, normally the, the, if a widget is removed from the from the hierarchy, it's, it's deactivated temporarily and then it's activated again. However, I think, if I remember rightly, there's no change when you stack your screens. They're just there behind. They're just not painted. 
So uh, unless there's unless they're set to opaque, set to false, then they're painted. I think that's the does only... that mean uh, does that mean animations stop or animations continue? Animations actually do stop. There's a tick. There's a, a, a there's a ticker mode widget in the top level, which, okay. which stops tickers completely for um, the invisible subtree. Um, you can also do that yourself. Uh, obviously, you can just wrap your stuff in ticker mode if you want to do that kind of thing. It's actually I, I found a bug. Sorry, I'm going to just the slide slide <laughs> off the but, but this is kind of interesting. Um, I found a bug in one of the apps I was building once. And it was the screen was always being repainted, always redrawing. It was causing performance problems. I just couldn't understand what was causing this. Um, someone's phone just went off. Can we make sure phones are muted? Um, I don't know who it was, but here's mine. Yours, yours, Scott. Anyway, um, the uh, crap. What was I saying? Yes. So what's kind of interesting about this is it turned out that um, I had a progress spinner. A global progress spinner that sit in the middle of the screen so that when something was happening it would show it or something like that and all i was doing was setting the opacity and i wasn't turning off the animation ah okay. that was something else i don't know what that was <laughs> um, somebody's being noisy <laughs> i'm the only one here with a dog you know so i'm the only one who should have background except for danielle and you yeah, have yeah. Yeah. talking yeah. parent in the background anyway um, so, so basically, what was happening here is that the the progress spinner was set to transparent, but it's still animating, which was still yeah. causing it to pay, be painted, and therefore it's painting a transparent pixels of nothing. So, um, the the solution to that is to use um, uh, visibility, the visibility widget, or ticker mode to control the the animation spin to on or off. So this is a little ad advice for people to to make sure that anything that is not visible is is the animations are disabled if you're doing your own custom sort of show hide stuff. Anyway, all right. Uh, I guess on to the next question. I'll I'll come back and we'll we'll give that a go at the end. Um, if yeah, just, uh, so, can you make a note of that, uh, Randall? Um, I'll try. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Let me see if I can do one here. Because for sure, let, let's be clear though, on a stateless widget, for sure, nothing's getting called. It might get rebuilt. Yeah. That's, it might get rebuilt depending upon what's going on. But that's it, right? I think what they were looking for was just the basic answer, which is mm -hmm. that if you push a route, it returns a future. You await that future, and you can put code then to be called when you're coming back from that route. Oh, yep, that's another thing. Yeah, I mean, I can't. Yeah. Like, sometimes that's it's probably like... what most people mean. They want to do something back in the original widget when they're in a detail route. Yeah. They want to have when they go back to the parent route, they want to actually do some action. Typically, it's because they don't have good state management and they need to refresh stuff manually. Well, I tell you, if you have to refresh stuff manually, you aren't yet thinking reactive data and you've got to be thinking reactive data to design large programs in Flutter. All right. I guess on to the next question. Sure. Uh, are, you, are you taking these, Scott? Uh, is it possible to zoom? I'm trying to see it, actually. <laughs> I have my camera in the way. Is it possible oh. to zoom on a specific area of a WebP image? I'm using photo view to zoom the image, but how to zoom at a specific area in the image? I, I, I'm going to... I need so, 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 yes, you can. The question here is more about, like, do you try to use... Are you trying to just, like, start the photo view with a preset image area of being viewed visible or are you just trying to after the fact view an image yeah a, i'm reading this as a multi-touch and how to how to do multi-touch on just the image and not the rest of the whole app no no that's what photo view does anyway so photo view you pinch it does that mm -hmm. right so say the photo the photo view which does that right where you like pinch and it zooms the image so he's got that working but you say how to zoom to a specific area of the image. Like I'm zooming programmatically, like start it up and have it zoomed in already. So I can imagine the use case here of you're, you're, you're trying to set your profile picture. You want to zoom in, get it right, in the position right and zoomed in right. And then you press save. And then on the next screen, you want to show here's what it's going to look like. You know, So here's the image. Right. But now you need to zoom that image in pre-cropped and pre-centered now. Well, my so, first question on that sure. then is maybe it's just meant to zoom and then drag around so take a look at the on if there's an on drag callback for no. panning 
that's already in the, no, but we're saying that's already in there on folks. But, but what I'm saying is if you want to programmatically do it, then you programmatically tell it to use that callback possibly to. No, 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 no. So, so, so the result of all these photo view and anything like this is what you call a matrix, right? Which is, uh, which carries the scale transform trans translation scale and, tra and skew of various other transformations, rotation, so on to position something on the screen. Um, so you'll find that, um, so I'm assuming he means the, the photo view, which is remember, let me share something here. Uh, share. Share window. Let's share, let's share window. Let's see what happens. It's coming through. Should I make this smaller? A bit bigger. Yeah, I see it. I know that 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 looks good enough, right? Yep, I can see it. So um, yeah, so I think it's called Photo View. Oops, I think Renan did it actually. That's his name, Helen. It's Helen actually. I keep always stupid English. Anyway, right. Um, yeah, so it's this one here, photo view. So you pinch to zoom already and pan around, right? It's called it's photo view. It's it's quite common. Um, so at the end of this, you you should be getting and I don't. So probably part of the con the controller has let's see a value offset scale rotation. So you've got position rotation scale as values. Interesting, there's no two matrix, but these things, these actually can be given to matrix four. Um, matrix four has a, uh, uh, a matrix four. I thought it was matrix four. Oh, because I'm searching for view. Uh, excuse me, matrix four. Thank you. Uh, has a compose function. Where you give it your translation rotation scale so all those three are the, are the values that you're getting from here so your rotation position and scale that will give you a matrix and then when you start an image widget or you can use like the other cropping functions to you to use those values that you get back from your controller but i believe an image widget actually has a transformation property mm. uh, i believe I, f I forget i feel like it does it's got enough properties. It must have in there somewhere. There's got to be oh. a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> right. Uh, it might be raw image. You know, I've just been so long. I don't see one, actually. Mm. Maybe you're meant to wrap it in a transformation well, I mean, box. I can say you can actually use a transformation widget. Yeah. And give you wrap it, that. And give it. Uh, and give it a raw transformation matrix four right here. Yep. In the normal in the normal constructor, and that will transform the image. You'll need to then put it in a clip rect or a clip round oval, clip oval, or something like that to actually get rid of the excess. But that would work. That would definitely work. Um, I have a feeling there's probably a couple of different. There's a couple of better ways. I mean, it all depends on if you're trying to like process the image or if you're trying to just like uh, display it. So maybe follow up with a question. Otherwise, we're going to move on because there's plenty of other yep. people here, you know, I guess. Sounds um, good to me. Flutter user versus Flutter developer. Is that a question? Is that a wrestling question? See who's going to win? <laughs> a Flutter, here's, the, here's the difference. A Flutter developer knows they're using Flutter. A Flutter yeah. developer, if you designed your app correctly, has no idea it's Flutter. A Flutter user. Yeah. Flutter yeah. user, yeah, yeah, you said, yeah. you said developer. developer twice. <laughs> <Made no sense. laughs> More coffee. More caffeine. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, there is no such thing as a Flutter user, right? Like, it's just a user at that point. Right. I think that there's another interesting point here. Actually, I found this out. I, I mean, this is quite common pra practice, and that is, it's very common for developers to build an app for developers, right? Mm -hmm. So they'll be, they'll be like, Please set the default value and confirm acceptance and enable something, right? Or something like this. Right. And all these words mean stuff to us that means sense to applications. But when a user goes, enable, confirm, accept, right. what, what is all this? You know, this sounds like legal speak to me, right? So um, the way, and again, same thing, like like you see like settings. It's just full of checkboxes with, with 
complex names of things and it all makes sense if you built the thing right but for for a lot of users it doesn't make any sense whatsoever so um there's that aspect of um uh that's kind of what you experience with mobile apps it's the ux like the user experience there's the uh, follow-up i mean if i use android then i'm an android user if someone uses my app we call them an app user okay while someone starts learning flutter and using it should we call him a flutter user or a flutter dev um it's a flutter is he coding dev, is he app. coding or just using yeah. it i mean yeah, I, 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 have one, I have one case where we might say it's a flutter user and that's that's like a qa guy and so he may be using some of the flutter tools to do stuff but not writing his own code so that might yeah. be one case where we have a Flutter user versus a dev, but yeah, there you go. I guess we'll move on to the next question. Then. Sure. <laughs> nope. Oh. nope, wrong one. <laughs> next. That wasn't the next one, was it? Oh, okay. And when a Flutter London one. insurance program opens for 2023. Okay. I want the job. Yeah. Question answered. Yeah. Is there a London internship? Flutter London is a meetup group. I don't understand why there would. No. So I think I think I think this might be a question around that we did the Flutter Dev Camp, and then that end, ended up with some internships and stuff at the end of it. Okay. Maybe that's what this is. Um, and there is the answer is we have no idea yet. But haven't planned it so. In fact, you're talking about DevCam. That was easy. Um, so there you go. Next. Cool. <laughs> How do fonts render with OpenGL on the embedded engine? Very well. Correctly. Correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the fonts are actually How? rendered with, with Skia, and Skia uses um, – what's the library? Um, Hmm. Not ha Hams, no, not ha uh, Hansel, no. Anyway, anyway, there's a, there's a uh, what's called text shaping library, which hmm. is actually about break new line breaking, shaping text, aligning text, and things like that. And then you've actually got reading the font glyphs, the shapes of fonts, and that comes from uh, I think it's Open True Type or no, no, what's it called? Uh, there's a standard one. Anyway, it's all built here. All standard. It's all standard ski stuff. Now it, it, there's um, yeah. there's actually a. Uh, uh, a separate one. It's not like Cairo or anything. This is this is actually a separate. Uh, anyway, it's all part skier and it all works. Um, now, when it comes to specifically with fonts in OpenGL, um, it has problems loading built-in fonts. If I remember rightly, in the embedded engine right now, it's a bug. Um, I think you have to load the fonts manually. There's actually a um, an API in Flutter to actually load a font it doesn't load them from the directory so you have to give it the file path um to man bug uh i think it's yeah here you go hook to load a font into the engine font loader here you go I me mean, yeah it brings up on screen uh if you want to know uh let's just do this it's probably about yeah, there you go. Uh, so neighbors dynamic loading of fonts at runtime, font loader. Um, and you do font loader dot add font and you can give it the bytes, raw bytes of a font if you want to load it yourself. Um, uh, you load font as well. Uh, load a font into the engine, register the font and loads the font. Um, this will be done, I think, I believe these loads are done for you automatically when the font is accessed, but you can add a font here and then it will. Uh, register the asset and by its name that's it is inbuilt but yeah they have to be um the font bytes for like uh otf or 2tf font but yeah that should do the job and then um away you go so yeah i, I would suggest you use that i'll pop it in the chat cool uh next kevin moore you should be the out there kevin. answering questions kevin <laughs> This is author Kevin. Yes. Of, um, of uh, and no, no, no. I'm just saying there's multiple Kevin. Here's Moore, to be right? Ray Wonderlake. Yeah. Yeah. Coco. They, they changed their name. Yes. Coco. That's it. Coco with a K. Yeah. Uh, what is the status of native Windows menus and desktop apps? I see they are working 
for Mac, but not for Windows. Is there still a menu bar GitHub package? Do you know there what? Is. No idea. I'm not even trying. Yeah. So um, we're going to have to wait and see what happens, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry. Not much of a good question there. Yeah, sorry. Answer, sorry. Can't answer everything. Would you recommend any packages to make layout easier? I've recently noticed Boxy, which looks kind of interesting. Have you had any experience in using it or anything similar? Yes, we recommend um, it. <laughs> actually, the funny we recommend thing, Boxy. But, but the yep. best thing that actually helped my ability to do layouts is Widget Book. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. by using Widget Book and not putting any sizes on your widgets, it forces you to be able to learn how to set up widgets that can respond. Yeah. And it, that's actually a great thing. I wouldn't rely on a package because what you're doing then is you're not learning how it works. Yeah. I was going to say that I was going to say there's also making, I mean, he says making loud easier. And the question is, it's already quite easy. So I'd say, what yeah. is the problem you're having with layout? So there are other be... packages that say everything's so easy, but what they produce is a mess. Yeah. So easy is well, not everything. Yeah, no, I was going to say, but the question here is, I'm kind of like, what is, I, I'm kind of curious about what you're trying to lay out that is difficult, and maybe it's the approach you're having, because Boxy solves a couple of sort of, uh, what's the word, like, uh, round, not round robin, but this kind of like circular dependency problems you can get if you're trying to make a reactive UI, one which depend on another, depend on another, and it kind of can solve some of that for you. However, um, for the most part, if you need a custom layout, most people don't realize that actually we're just built in that let you do these things. So I'm going to briefly kind of, uh, I'm just, since I've got the screen share and I've got it here, SDK, I'll, I'll just show it to you. Um, sorry, Daniel, you're behind the question there. But. <laughs> so um, it was uh, uh, you, well, Flow. Uh, flow is one widget which lets you size and position the children to fit, it says here, efficiently. Basically, you provide a flow delegate. And the delegate has uh, uh, a layout method. Uh, was it layout method or something like that? There's a, there's a method you override. I can't remember what it is. Paint children. That's the one. And uh, you then can use get constraints, get size, and then it gives you a, a function like paint child. Allows you to animate and paint them. It does not cause layout. And this is kind of interesting because it means that you can actually position. I I did this in actually I did this in example. I think I did use this in an example. Or maybe it was too complicated, actually. I think I might have been reset. But, um, for example, there's an action menu that pops out like a star, you know, like it shows other action buttons. And that's a good example there of you're not trying to do layout, but what you're actually trying to do is animate and move widgets. And that's where this is kind of a really effective use case. Now, uh, on the other hand, you've got um, custom multi-child layout, custom single-child layout, which are also kind of popular. So, um, again, Depending on what you're trying to do, custom single child layout lets you control the position of your child widget without a stack, without all that kind of stuff, giving it kind of uh, sort of functional functional override and gives you a way of overriding the constraints and the way the constraints of the child are handled um, and the size and then the layout of of the child. So that 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 can be really handy in certain situations. And then multi child layout is here's an example here. I think we expressed this before, but yeah, this again same thing. It gives you a method that you can override, um, you identify your children with layout IDs, and then uh, inside the, the layout method, um, you can go look obviously all the examples here, but inside the, uh, the layout method that you override, you then can lay out each of your children with position child. Um, I think there's also size child somewhere in here to get the constraints set up, I can't remember. But anyway, um, you can go over a look, there's, there's plenty of information online about these things. And they, they kind there, of there's a there's a great video that came out of Flutter Vikings by Craig Levens on the uh, um, life cycle of a widget. And it's great because it talks about how the layout phase and the actual rendering phases happen. And it even explains how Layout Builder does its magic in that it actually stops the rendering phase and goes off or stops the first part of the layout phase and it goes off and makes sure everything else is uh, already sized. And then it knows what its sizes are. 
Boxy sort of sits in that same spot, but it's fully programmable. It doesn't just give you a constraint. It gives you everything you want to know and be able to size your children first and figure out where they all go. And that's before you even report your size to your parent. And so Boxy is sort of the universal widget, but it's like taking your car off of automatic and operating a stick shift. And if you're not familiar with that analogy, sorry, some of you are too young to have ever seen a stick shift car. But going from an automatic to a stick shift means you're doing more of the work, but it does give you complete flexibility. And it's an amazingly flexible. You should definitely check it out. Uh, Ping did a really great job of uh, writing that code up. Ping is one of the devs on um, on uh, the Flutter Discord, one of the uh, managers there. Cool guy. All right. Guess we'll crack on. More questions. Move on. No. Is there a full certification program you can recommend? Nope. There is none. Nope. And there's none. And there's none I would recommend. There you go. That's the yes. answer. Yeah. And, okay. and if anybody's claiming oh. to have a Flutter certification yeah. program, I have questions. Yeah, really, because it's quite not loud. supported. Nope. You're quite, you're quite loud there, Scott. I don't know. You came back quite loud. Already then. Any better? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, look at how big my microphone is. Anyway. Wow, um, yes. The. Uh, yeah, I think I think hopefully in the future we'll be seeing some certification programs and some proper things. But at the moment, there's no, there's nothing. Uh, I also I did talk to the people who are administering the Google Cloud certifications, and what they told me, cancel. I don't know. Cancel. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, <laughs> You said the magic, magic G word and it just responded. Yes, yes. Like, yes what um, can I do for I've, you? I've subscribed to Skills Boost, so I'm learning about cloud. Yeah. And there are certifications, and I talked to the people who are administering them about what went into creating the certifications, and they said they have absolutely no idea because Google takes the integrity of such programs so seriously that the people who come in contact with the students are not allowed – to come in contact with the people who designed the course. Yeah. So they don't even know. And when we talked to the Flutter team about this, the first time this was raised that I know of, I talked to Matt Sullivan about it in 2018. It's been a topic of conversation for some yeah. time. Well. Yeah, and it, it's been for years. And the, the first question people on the Flutter team ask is, who's to judge what has to go into a certification? Who, yeah. who gets to decide that? And then who's going to put together the curriculum and who's going to decide what the questions are? Who's going to judge it? The best so, certification I, is having a good GitHub. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I, I was, great what you know. I, I was on a rehearsal call for a panel coming up at Flutter Forward last week, and this topic came up then, and the answer is still the same as what everybody just said. Yep. You know, there is not one and nobody knows of one they would come close to recommending. Nope. Right. Now, there are some courses that if you take them and you can show that you took them, they will carry some weight, but they're not a certification, such as the London yep. App Brewery. Uh, what was it? Flutter Boot Camp with Dart. It's $10 uh, US. Yeah. And uh, 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 Andrea Br Andre Bizotto um, yeah. has done a really good complete Flutter course as well. Um, yep. Yeah. Good stuff. I'll get I'll get some links to those uh, and put them in the chat here. But th those carry the kind of um, respect that you would expect a certification to, but they're not certifications. Yep. Okay. Next question. Yeah. I saw yeah. the first. I saw the most. I saw the most Flutter development tutorials. Are on Flutter, amplifier, etc. But real job requirements to retrieve data from ExpressJS server. Here, students locked. Yeah, is there I, any resource to learn it? Hang on. Could you, I, could could you this one. I mean, I, you understand the question because I'm funny. So most. Yeah, well, ExpressJS is really Flutter. nothing more than uh, RESTful no. API. No, I know that. I, that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to understand what the problem yes. here is because the very beginning of it says development tutorials are on Flutter amplifier, etc. I don't know what I mean by amplifier. I mean probably AWS, AWS amplifier. 
right? Um, do me um, I can't really pull my own screen up right now, Simon. Can you throw my share up? Um, sure. But, you know, I, I looked up ExpressJS, and it's really just RESTful APIs, and there's a pile of information about how to do that in Flutter. It's in the yep. Flutter documentation, accessing REST API tutorials, Geeks for Geeks, I mean, Java Point, they're everywhere. Right. Um, now, maybe you were looking at it thinking that you needed something that said ExpressJS. No, what, what you really need is REST APIs, and hopefully you're using JSON. I hope. Yep. yep. And that's Flutter does that every day, all day long. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of tutorials on consuming content from APIs. I agree. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think hopefully I'll using, that. And, hopefully and, using and there, JSON and not XML. Yes. Someone else. Someone else. <laughs> there's also, I could say, like, there's an interesting thing here. Like, uh, are they also talking about server side development? Because then that's other, that's another thing as well. I don't know. But, if you, if you've answered your question. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing I was going to add to that is because it's making API calls to somewhere, they're not related. So if you're needing to, Kind of like some sort of a full stack kind of whatever, then, then then do something to learn how to produce content with Express JS servers if that's what you need. But then consuming it, you come back to Flutter for it. But they really are not the same. You can you know it's, there's no difference in how you consume it really. All right. All righty, and I am posting this as me in the chat uh, because of the laptop situation. I don't have. The ability to post this Flutter community today. That's right. This is good still one way. How can we integrate Flutter with Arduino Uno? <laughs> so Simon and I uh, were talking about talking about this, and we never did. Actually, actually so, I, so, so both both myself, Danielle, Roman, Scott. There's a bunch of us are all in, in, uh, interested in embedded Flutter work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me let me just caveat all embedded Flutter and Dart development. You need a <laughs> it's not going to appear. It's clear though. You can't see it. Oh, well. you've got, anyway, um, you've got. Um, you have to remember that that Dart and Flutter have um, are, have a higher requirement than most embedded platforms. So, that, for example, the Arduino Uno probably has about I think it's thirty two kilobytes of RAM. No nope. kilobytes of RAM. No, nope. no. And, and it has about I think probably uh, something like two fifty six, if you're lucky, of flash memory. 256 kilobytes of flash memory. Like it's meant for small functional logical things, not okay. meant for running Linux. <laughs> Go on. But, but I was going to say, I, I, I have actually worked on an Arduino project with Flutter. It was a, um, what it was, is it was actually a dog collar that, that measured, it was trying to use Bluetooth to measure the distance from how far you went. So I mean, that, that's fraught with issues anyway. But but the point was, it was using, it was using Bluetooth to communicate with the, uh, the collar to give it you know, which is an Arduino chip on a on a thing. It was using a Bluetooth from the phone to communicate with the Arduino, and and use that to actually send the commands and stuff back. So, and that was in Flutter, but it was on it was running on a different device. It wasn't running on the Arduino, but it was using yeah. well known methods of communicating with the Arduino. Whether that was some it, sort of a driver with cables mm -hmm. off a of Raspberry Pi, whether it's Bluetooth, whether it's you know how, however you, you there's also a it's module a, that goes on it that is a web server. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, before we distract away from this, the, the question being taken a couple of ways. So, so Daniel was just explaining that Flutter is not running on the Arduino Uno. Flutter is still running on your phone, and instead you're communicating with Arduino Uno. So you've still got your Arduino Uno written in the C style language that Arduino uses, for example, mm -hmm. and that's using Bluetooth or or HTTP or whatever the type of, type of communication mechanism to communicate with your Flutter app running on your phone. Right. Therefore, Flutter is not running on the embedded platform. Okay, just just want to be clear about these these phrasings here, right? How how we're describing mm -hmm. this, but yeah, you can easily make make a Flutter app communicate with any embedded platform because it's just use the communication channel. And exactly what we just said about the a, the rest of APIs is is essentially the same. You you as long as both ends can agree on a way of communicating, they can communicate, right? And that whether that be Bluetooth, whether it be Wi-Fi, whether it be local network, whether it be over the internet, whatever it is, you can do that, right? So. Um, it's, that's more about the capabilities of the device. And um, as I said, the 
I mean, the Arduino Uno is quite a limited device. I think it runs the Atmel 168. I think the chip. I'm trying to remember now. It's been a while. Oh, 328. Yeah, the 328. Yeah, it's got 32 kilobytes of, is that flash memory? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's not It's not the platform. It's not probably the platform for, uh, as I said, running Flutter. So, so Flutter requires... Um, like things like a frame buffer and a graph and a graphics processor and all these things. So, so this is this is a, a higher level requirement than what an Arduino would have. Uh, I, I have print out if you're trying to run Flutter on a better platform, you're going to need something that a runs the dark code, and um, so that means it needs to be an ARM uh, seven with uh, with hardware floating point at least. Uh, ARM six has now been removed. ARM eight is also supported. And um, that's the thumb up codes as well. Um, so there's a hard requirement from from the CPU. The G, you're also going to need a GPU there if you want to get any good sort of throughput to your graphics device, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And again, your graphics, you, you know, the, whatever platform you're developing, whatever better, better platform is going to need to be able to output to a to a display of some sort, whether it be uh, like an LCD or it's going to be like a HDMI and, and go off to some extent on display. That, that's really up to you. So the best way I'd suggest if you're trying to run right now, the easiest way for anyone to do Flutter on a better platform is to use a Raspberry Pi. Uh, Raspberry Pi 4, uh, that's 4B, uh, whatever, but as long as it's a 4, uh, we'll, we'll support it. Again, that is because the chip hat is ARM 8, ARM uh, VA, uh, 8 VA, VA, sorry, VA, V8 is the is the ABI. Um, there's also Risk Risk Five is now a new new platform. Well, it's not a new platform; it's been around for a while, but it's now getting some traction. Uh, that's Risk V. If you see it written down, it's Risk Five, and that also Dart builds a Risk Five, and there's some better platforms for that. Um, but right now, um, yeah, the cost of something like that and the amount of memory and everything else that you know you're still looking. It's not like a cheap platform. Right, so, so you're still going to be looking around the fifty pound mark, uh, possibly a hundred pound mark for. Uh, so, and to be clear, another thing about embedded. Sorry, I'm not going on here, but just just to key everyone in on this, if you want to try embedded, your development kit will always be much more expensive than an end product, right? So your development kit might be three hundred pounds, right? Like or something like 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 superly expensive because it comes with a lot of options, a lot of connectors a lot of plugs a lot of because it's for development for, for giving you those options and abilities then when you actually come to building a device you might get the the like the Raspberry Pi module that sits on a board that you can get designed that would be your custom hardware and that's then uh that's got a very small subset of requirements from from your development kit so yeah um yeah go on not, not about this so when you're done with this I have one thing to interject well, that's it. That's all I was going to say. Like, there's it, it's it basically is like a whole big thing, and it's great that we can run uh, uh, Flutter and Dart on some of these embedded platforms. Basically, if the platform can run Linux, it can it can run uh, Flutter and Dart. That's that's I'd say a basic point of the key. Okay. Come. I just want to interrupt uh, with a non sequitur, and that is that I had a great time on Flutter Friday's trivia show last Friday. I'll put a post to it in the uh, in the uh, chat. But it was wonderful. It was fun. We had a bunch of people trying to challenge me on my Flutter knowledge. Uh, and it turned out to be a lack of uh, fruition because uh, I uh, took first place, embarrassingly so. Um, but check that show out. It's every two weeks. And uh, you'll be able to subscribe to the at sign channel, which is where it pops up. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And real prizes. You actually get money. If you get in the top three spots, so uh, come join us. I'll be there again. We, yeah, at, at some are doing wonderful work, and we, I think I think from us, the community really kind of support them what they're doing with the privacy concerns of everyone online. Um, before we jump off this topic, I will just mention that I I found this, and I think not a lot, not a lot of everyone. I didn't know this project even existed. It's called LVGL. Have you any of you guys heard of this? Mm -mm. Okay, so LVGL is. Um, well, it's it's an embedded library for graphics, uh, for for those kind type of like little machines. And look, this is the type of output. It's very much like Flutter, but 
do you want to know the crazy thing? The requirements. This thing will run on STM32s, NXPs, the Outlook, Arduino. So, so this is like Flutter, but it runs on the Arduino. It runs on a bunch of really small units. And here you go. It, it will integrate any platform. All you need is 32 kilobytes of SRAM, 128 kilobytes of flash, uh, and a frame buffer that is one-tenth the size of the screen because it literally renders. It can render you know, one-tenth of the screen at once, and then it outputs it to like the LCD. So it can actually render as it displays. So this is really, really low level. This is like, you know, like I guess it, it, it's still low level. It's still very difficult. But this is really impressive. The fact that it's got all these kind of, you know, chart keyboard widgets and all the rest of it supports MicroPython and a bunch of other things. Yeah, that you can actually do this kind of, you know, interface um, with an embedded system uh, without anything really complicated. So I think this is quite a really interesting competitor to flutter wow. in the embedded space. Nice. So, yeah. Anyway, I came across it the other day. I was like, wow, I've not even seen that before. Because stuff like that was completely out of scope for, for, for quite a few embedded systems. Like, there's no way you could achieve something like that with that kind of spec. So whatever they're doing here is amazing. Right, let's move on. Uh, do you want to take Scott? Someone, someone has said, thank you, seniors. It's really helpful. In America, when we <laughs> say seniors, we mean someone who is over 65 years old. <laughs> I'm not um, even over 65 yet. We need to talk. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I, I'm not offended. You guys seem to be shut up, Simon. It offends me. It offends me. <laughs> no, only a few I'm years thinking, off. I'm thinking of an app where the app's background is transparent, kind of like an overlay where you can see the Android phone wallpaper. Mm. Is it possible in Flutter or should I look for native code? But that's you gonna be Wow. Yeah, you can do that, Flutter. No problem. Yeah. I said this last week. I think I think I answered this last week or the week before. Um, the Flutter activity, what you're missing is the documentation on native platform, first of all. So let's let me just jump over to that quickly. Um, so if you go to api.flutter.dev slash Java doc, you will see the native documentation for the for the native API and inside um activity i think it is no not activity there uh b is the flutter that's no, flutter activity no, where's classes all classes all classes um one of these is the old one one's the new one i forget which one i think io embedding is the new one right uh we'll, we'll just say but this is pretend the question's is. blocking a lot of that uh, it's all right I'm, I'm just trying to find something uh i'll hide the question for now so, so the question was how do we make it transparent? Well, anyway, in here, there's actually, it talks about like all the things you can override. And one of them is the rendering mode. So it has, there's two overrides. If I can find it in here. And render, yeah, render, 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 render. Yeah, We're get rendering mode. Really fun with this. So, so it's these, these two, these, these are the two uh, functions you override in your activity. So get render mode. Uh, you can have a return back uh, that it returns back a texture and then the transparency mode that you can tell it that you want to render with transparency. And then you'll, you'll also need to edit your Android theme and inherit from the, uh, there's a transparent theme. I can't remember what it's called now, but there's a, in, inside Android, there's a, uh, a parent theme that you can inherit from. That means that the window background is set to uh, color transparent. You can also put that in your attributes and your own theme. Um, and basically that will then mean that your activity is essentially transparent and it sits on top of other things and you can, yeah, do whatever you want. You can also, uh, if you do a little method channel, you can also control the, what's called the window size. And then you can do that chat head bubble thing if you wanted to, that like that uh, Facebook Messenger does and other ones, that kind of thing. You can do all that with Flutter, no problem. But again, you start then, you're going into the realms of this is only going to work on Android, right? So, um, you know, you, that's for that. But then you, so if you want to now do this on iOS, you now have to go look at the iOS specific APIs for that. And, and again, there is actually, um, to be clear, let me just jump back for people that don't know. Um, yeah, it's, it's api.flutter.dev slash objective C. Uh, uh, was OBJ T doc. Uh, Oh, it was, oh, yeah. Oops. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I'll put these links in the chat while we're here. 
Uh, and then this is the same thing, but for the Objective C um, wrapper libraries and so on. So the, the shell, sorry. Um, so yeah, you can go find those. Um, um, they're all they're linked from the main website. Um, but yeah, the document side. But. And also, before we move on to the next question, please remember we keep a running list of questions, and every time you ask, we'll put that question at the bottom of the list. If you ask the same question again, we're going to move you to the bottom of the list. So if you keep asking over and over and over, you're going to be last again and again and again. We right now have 14 questions lined up. So we haven't forgotten you. We're not ignoring you. There are just a lot of cues out there. Right. Um, okay. So uh, next question, I guess. Unless you want anything, anyone has anything to add? Huh. All right. Flutter swag games. What do you mean? I have no idea what that is. Um, yeah, I... The only Flutter Swag game, actual Flutter Swag game I've ever seen was at an in-person event where they had that prize <laughs> arm that goes down oh, and grabs the yeah. Yeah. Nice. But that's I mean, but that was at a Flutter event. I've never seen uh um, anything else. Um need to go take care of a dog. Be right back. Right. Um what's next? Uh, yeah, if you, if you haven't, uh, if we haven't answered your question, feel free to like post again, obviously. Um, right. What is the best way to show a snack bar and switch or navigate a page in the background whilst keeping the snack bar? Um, so snack bars. What? Um, I was going to say this could be like the old solution to putting a gradient in a uh, app bar, which is fake it. No. Make something act like a snack bar, but then... No. Go, go, go deal with the doggy feet. Right, right. um, so, so if you want something to su survive your navigation, it has to be outside of the navigator, right? The navigator is the child that's given, essentially that hosts uh, all your screens inside material app. So Material App has a parameter called Builder, which lets you wrap your entire navigator with whatever widgets you want. So when you register a scaffold, it, it registers itself as the scaffold messenger. There's no reason why you can't have uh, wrap your entire um, navigator with a scaffold widget. And therefore, the top level scaffold is always going to be that one. And then therefore, all the snack bars it displays will survive your navigation. So the answer, the short answer to this is um, override the builder parameter of Material App. I think there's a similar one on, on Cupertino and other things. Um, but on Material App and also Widget App, um, both have a uh, builder parameter. Override that and have it return a scaffold. And the body of your scaffold should be the child that's being passed into your builder. Um, and in that situation, um, yeah, you then wrap your you're wrapping your entire app in a, uh, in a scaffold. You might need to wrap the scaffold in a material and on something else. Um, yeah, essentially you just follow, follow your nose. It should be fine. Um, you're right there, Randall. <laughs> the sounds you are hearing are birds. <laughs> they are they are on Danielle's end. <laughs> right, that's that's good. Um, I think it's probably what the whistling was. Yes, it's Danielle's. Yes. Uh, right. Nick, uh, sorry, did you have anything to add, though, right, Danielle? To feel, feel free to just jump in with a question. I don't know. Um, oh, well, so, okay. So this is a follow on from that last one. Work in practice is question, not flutter. Oh, no, maybe it's not the same person. Uh, uh, how do you, peeps, learn and refresh your knowledge? How much time do you set aside? Do you learn as you go, or do you? Do you dedicate time? I, I think there's, a, for me personally, I think we should each answer this, but for me personally, um, I do try and set aside some time, and I think all developers end up spending a good 15% at least, probably more like, you want to try to spend as much as you can, to be honest. Um, now, I say much as you can, you know, obviously, you know, your work takes up a bulk of your time or your your job or whatever it is. So um, so there's amount, as, as you said, you learn as you go on the job. There's a certain amount of doing that. Like, like when you come across a problem, you don't have to solve it. You have to go 
research the solution to your problem and, and do that. that. That's obviously learning time. However, there's always new things coming out and they don't, don't relate yeah. to what you're doing inside your job. And at that point, it's like you have to keep ahead. You have to kind of learn these things. So so like we mentioned Boxy today, right? Imagine you haven't used yeah. that package. Stick in a list. And then when you go, when you have some spare time, go try Boxy out, check it out, look at the example. Okay, now I've got that in my toolkit, right? So that when it comes to a problem I want to solve, okay, I can go to Boxy to, to solve that thing for me or do that thing. So I think that's the way I sort of approach this and that I always try to specify some of my time to learning and and obviously work, learn on the job. And finally, I'd say answering questions online. And I know, Randall, you, you, this is a big one for you. But but yeah, if I even if I don't know the solution, I know where I might go to find the solution and I can work out what it might be. And that is the answer I might help someone with because they don't have enough knowledge to even find the answer to, to get that far to answer the question. I was going to say also an important point of what uh, Simon just said is that you should at least when you hear about something you don't know anything about, check it out long enough to know what category of problems it solves. Everything is a solution to something and you should learn what its problems it solves so that later when you have a problem of that type. You go, oh, I don't know much about Boxy yet, but I heard that takes care of this. Hmm. And that is a great mapping to start making is even if you're not going to get down to figure out what even what, uh, you know, widgets come with Boxy to at least understand that it's about layout issues that are thorny and stuff. You'll go, oh, yeah, I'll go check that out for that. And also my solution to this problem is just don't have a social life. If you don't have a social <laughs> life. You can spend almost enough time being online to keep you up. You can't have a dog either, trust me. You can't have a dog. <laughs> I have karaoke as my one vice, and that is it. Uh, but it, it's, yeah, you just, you kind of have to, if you're going to dedicate to this stuff, you really have to go almost full out. Um, right. Now, one one other thing, though, I do want to point out, two, actually two, I'm sorry, regarding packages before you start using them, you might want to ask around to people and see if anyone knows about it. Does it use good practices? Does it use bad practices? Because mm -hmm. there are, but the vast majority of packages solve problems, but there are a few out there that cause them. Yeah. <laughs> and you need to be careful of that. Um, and the other thing too, as far as learning goes, I mean, talking to people, constantly, constantly yeah. talking to people. Um, we're on Zoom a lot with about five of us, but, you know, get together with a group, whatever, um, Discord, be on Discord. Discord, and definitely. 50 people constantly on yep. general there, 50 well, people. Yep. And these and are well, experts, most to, of them. To finish right? this up, though, when trying to learn while doing things, if you're pressed for time... Break out a little window if you can, or even leave it in the background if you can't, but have a YouTube video running. And you're not staring at it, paying attention to it, but it's just kind of there in the background and things might catch your ear. Um, the boring show. How many hours and hours and hours of boring show are there? Have you ever sat down and listened to the entire Widget of the Week playlist? Mm -hmm. I had a 10-hour drive one time and just looped through them. I couldn't stare at it because I was driving, but it was very helpful. So just keep and things going in the background instead of music. Th this was actually pretty similar to what my answer is going to be, because I agree with what everybody else has said. But one of the things that, that I find I need to do is I, I need to multitask. So for example, I was watching, you know, I was watching uh, videos while I was on the treadmill. Um, I, I, I'm, um, you know, I, I was asked to give a speech at, or talk at the uh, the Dev Fest we had down here recently. And so I picked a topic, uh, which was accessibility, which I needed to implement for my work job, but I didn't really know about it. So it was a great excuse to go learn it because I needed to do something else. And so try to find ways when you're learning to to maybe steal time from other places by just doing that, by, by uh, you know. And Both something time. really cool about that is if you have to, if you're putting time in to make a talk, this is a great excuse to be able to use it as billable hours. So you get paid for preparing your talk 
which is not normally something we can manage to pull off. <laughs> I well, I, I'm it, lucky that way. My my job actually values being out and doing stuff. So, cool. you know, they, they, they want to be known as, as someone that, that's, a, you know, a good member of the community. And so, so yeah, that, that's always something to do with me. There's, there's, there's also, um, there's also that kind of aspect. And this is, I can only speak to my own experiences here, just thinking back about this. And that is, for example, um, there might be something that you that you've seen you go how do they do that so so it can be like i don't know let's say um voip like voice calls how, how do i how do how do these things how does uh this do how, how do we do this streaming you know like go you go research a topic and just read up and learn about things and, and the protocols involved and the principles involved because it's just so much there's so much to everything it's not just the how computers work it's not just a platform you've got protocols you've got internet you've got just everything digital is just you can't know it all right just just can't know it all and i think that the key here is for me personally would be i would go and say how is that done learn about it and then try building it myself and it may not you may not come out with anything that's a production ready that's great you know but what you've done is the the journey of the journey of trying to do that has made you learn a lot of not just that thing but lots of other side channels as it were off of that that topic i'm gonna so, dash backstage for a bit we uh, uh have to make some room on the screen here yeah actually i was yeah. hello hello how wait. are you doing scott did I you want to say something say yeah. randall could take my place because oh, i am go. kind of up to here and things that i have to get done right now Come back. I know. Come back to the screen. Yeah. 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 There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was I was happy done and uh, I wanted to go take a nap, but that's okay. I'll I'll, I'll <laughs> be <laughs> out of um, You know, there, there's there's some interesting comments in YouTube chat, including something that looks like a fire extinguisher. So. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let, all right, uh, you all have fun, and I will catch you next week. Bye, Scott. See you next week. Tom. Bye, bye. Hey. So, um, interesting enough, Welcome, obviously Zoe. next week, yes. next week is going to be the event, the magical event. So yeah. we haven't worked out. If I remember rightly, the the, the time it works out that we can still have this at the usual time. I think there's an hour afterwards. Um, yeah. We'll probably there's a quite a few places going to do watch parties and things. So we'll see how it goes. But um, there's also a possibility that we could do something. Um, uh, like if we do it straight afterwards and we could then comment on what was what came out during the keynote and all this so hopefully join us next week for some cool insights and all the rest of it so anyway let's we're not going just yet we've got more questions to answer and thank you Salih for joining us Salih do you want to introduce yeah. yourself quickly uh, hi everyone uh, I'm Sadi and I'm working at AWS Simplify as a developer advocate I have been in the Flutter business like these folks for a long time period <laughs> and <laughs> every once in a while when I get the chance or when I have the time because, you know, I don't know how you people manage the time to find out, you know, like, like dedicate some time to do this every week. So really, really great job. But whenever I have the time, I just yes. try to stop by. <laughs> it is difficult, but also at the same time is if it's the same time, same place, you you know, that's like a yeah. slot that you go, this is reserved, right? Which actually has helped, like, to, to keep... Because before it was moving around and stuff to try and work yeah. with the No, no. Keep it at the same time. There's regular viewers. They know when it's going to happen. It's, that makes it a lot easier to work to work with. I, 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 um, have this, um, I have this amazing Tuesday night through Wednesday morning ritual of yeah. things <laughs> that I do at specific half-hour intervals just to be able to get set up to be here. So it's... Uh, uh, you know, I have to stop karaoke at 11. <laughs> I have to get home. Uh, that you know, because uh, it's it's right now it's 10 a.m. for me, so it's still pretty early in the day. So yeah, so cool. Before uh, before we get off that last question, let me come. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so let me see if I can find it here. Salih, do you want yeah. to uh, give your answer to this question? I think we've all yeah. given our our points of view. I'd be love to hear yours. Yeah. Uh, so let me read the question. How do people learn and refresh your knowledge? How much time do you set aside? Do you just learn as you go or do you dedicate time? So um, I think biggest reason that we remember some stuff is we use it day to day. So we are not machines that we just save something into the memory and just keep it until the end of our days. That's not possible. Sometimes I even forget about, 
forget about the thing that I have eaten in the morning. So <laughs> it really changes a lot along the way. And what I do to refresh is that I always do hands-on experience. So I try to build something. I always have a couple of side projects on the side that if I'm curious about something, I just find out a scenario for one of these projects and build on top of it to you know, like learn about it. Another good way is to write. I write a lot of blog posts and so on just to be able to, you know, like share what I have learned. And another good point is someone can read it and actually give you a feedback that either you didn't think of or basically you didn't see. So you can learn while sharing your knowledge as well. I'm just and thinking lastly, about the reply back. You're an idiot. You did do this. You're like, oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you, if someone says, are you stupid? Just say, yeah, but let me know why. So that, at least that yeah. is what I do. And like, I try, like, one of my curse, <laughs> one of my curses is that, like, I love this job a lot. And yeah. when you love a job, you dedicate time without even knowing. Like you read it on the road to wherever you go, you like listen to podcasts. Sorry for my word. And you go to the bathroom, take your phone and read about it. <laughs> it is how it is, you know, like it is how it is. And this is a way that you stay on top of things. But at the end, one thing that I would like to say is that embrace the fact that not everyone knows everything. If you do not know something, we will just Google it like anyone else, like for example, it's the same for me, same for Simon, same for Randall, same for Daniel. It's the same. Like, no one is going to, you know, like, <laughs> uh, imagine the fact that we know everything. That's not possible. Especially when you have this GD title, they're like, yeah, you need to know everything. I don't. I can tell you. <laughs> there, is, there is another interesting side to that I will mention. That is, I think the more you do, the more you learn, and the more you learn online, and the more you do your own research, the more you work out how to search, right? Yeah. Like the, 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 the keywords and the phrases mm -hmm. and the uniqueness of the statements that you're making, that you're trying to look for. And it's like, it's a bit very much like the questions that we get answered here. Sometimes you might get answered like, um, I'm trying to think, they, they, they ask for something specific. Like, how do I make this transparent? The answer is no, it's because you're trying to navigate. It's a completely separate thing, but you have to yeah. understand the context and frankly, search engines are great context, right? They well, they just don't doesn't exist, right? So, so you have not to yet. Like, not yet. You have to paraphrase. So, <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say, Chat GPT, right? Yeah. Um, but, you, know, you, could, you could try that. But, but the point here is, is that I think something that you learn is learning how to learn or learning how to search yeah. to better your yeah. knowledge. And I think that's you gain that over time. Think it's can... thinking of keywords that, when added together, make the page you want. That yes. is the math that you have to do. It's kind of, what I think are, it's, what, yeah, what are the keywords that, that if you end it will be just your page? I just thought, yeah. is there is there a frame of mind here, which is if I was to write an article about this, I would include these topics. You're kind of searching yep. for that. Do you yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Like, yeah of, that's the other side of it. Place of the person who might have already done the work you're trying to try not get to. That's and the SEO kind of side it. of writing articles. Yeah, yeah. I've written 255 magazine articles in my life, and part of it was putting the right keywords in there every time. Yes. Yeah. To right. such a Are degree you that I Googled for my own, I Googled for a problem I was trying to solve, and I ended up on one of my own columns. That's <laughs> how crazy this is. Yes. I've done that before. I, 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 I've yeah. found yeah. something yeah. when I was looking. Yeah. Do you know what's funny? Do what's um, funny is when you're searching around and you find someone else has quoted your own stuff. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, oh, it's got my name there. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, I, I had that moment with accessibility stuff. I was like okay. searching something and I saw someone actually linking my blog post about it. I was like, hmm, this looks nice. And I was like, okay, well, shit, I actually wrote this one. Oh my God. <laughs> That was Who is this crazy one. guy that yeah. wrote this? Oh, <laughs> me. All right. I was going to say, Tech, Tech Explorer called it Google Foo. Like Kung Fu, but yeah. Google Foo. Yeah. yeah. And yes. that's yes. that's something yes. that I, I definitely, like, you know, you, you'll be with friends. And they'll, yes. they'll be looking for something, and, and they can't find it. And, and yeah, you put, you put, you know, you put in the right keywords real quick, and boom. You know, we're you, you evil. I'll just as a hint about last Friday, we're evil. When it comes to trivia quizzes, 
because we can find Google stuff much faster than you can. <laughs> well, I, I, I we, we had a, a on my cruise I was on a few weeks ago. They had um, yeah. they had a thing with like stars when they were young, you know, pictures of of, of celebrities when they were young. Yeah. And I just pulled up Google Lens and I got them all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just I'm just imagining uh, Celine then like putting up his own article going. This guy just doesn't have the answer I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> me. <laughs> like, really, 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 really. Anyway, that kind of things happened to me before. I'm like, I'm like this yeah. guy, just, just, his point of view is always information. It doesn't know the, it doesn't have the answer I'm looking for. It's like, oh, it's mine. It's me. I don't, of course I don't. <laughs> right. Right. Moving on. Quick. Let's get some more questions. I think cool. we're going to like get your final questions in, everyone, because we want to have some time before the two hour mark is up to uh, do some live coding or just have some more right. chat. So get your questions in now. Make sure you put a queue in front of them so we can find them in the chat. Uh, yep. Then, yeah, stay tuned. Let's go on to some more, 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 more questions. You just had one up there. Um, Here we go. Julian mm. says, uh, any sneak peeks? And you can give us information about Flutter Ford. No, nope. It is going to be in Kenya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, and how come we still be there on this call? Humans. <laughs> And now, uh, a couple of hours before now, next week, and we'll find out. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. And, and again, 165 next, hours. <laughs> and and uh, next week, straight after the keynote, we'll be having the Hunter Cure at the usual time, and we'll be able yep. to uh, to talk about those things. So, yeah. I, I, just to direct as much of an answer as I can give here, because, yes, I'm under an NDA. I know some things. I can't tell you those. But if you have been following the commits to the Dart SDK and the Flutter SDK. Open source. It's all open source. And the roadmaps are there. You'll be able to pretty closely <laughs> tell what some of the key points are going to be. I mean, it's not going to be too many surprises, I don't imagine. Um, I think, I'll, I'll uh, some stuff back. I think, think sorry, what? I think... I think we're gonna like we're gonna have some surprises. I think we're gonna have some surprises. There was some surprises. Yes. It's, it's it's kind of one of those annoying things, right? Like, like I think this has been mentioned before, but like when you have a project that's open source, it's really hard to do these kind of things because yeah. it is just open, right? And yeah. there is that kind of like I want to we want to show off what we've been doing, but also since everyone's just following along and working with the open source project so tightly, if it, you know if you're involved in it so, so well, you know what's happening, right? Yeah. So you know you know. Um, but you know, tune into the show. We we try and keep on top of these things, and maybe we should have a segment which is review the commits or something. Like remove the pull. Yeah. We kind of <laughs> oh, go yeah. through to see oh what's happened. And maybe we should do that as a segment here. I mean, um, it would be yeah. nice to have a segment like, for example, how to read the Flutter repo in a way that you understand what's going on. You know. Yeah. <laughs> in this yeah, I think this, that's actually another skill, I think, just, just kind of going back. I think I think I, I take, kind of take it for granted, but just being able to navigate code and, like, as you navigate code, I kind of picture – I can't put it into words because it's just, it's just kind of second nature to me, but picturing how things are connecting, you know what I mean? And you kind of start filling out the picture of, oh, this does this, this connects to that, or it rewrites this. And before you know it, you've kind of got the image of the machine in your mind. That kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, I feel like I – mean, like, there's an aspect of that when you're navigating APIs and source code and libraries where you're kind of understanding how it's constructed to then how you should use it. Does that kind of make sense? I mean, one thing to keep in mind though, like we have people from different levels, right? Like, I mm -hmm. mean, I I don't need to say like Simon is an experienced <laughs> It's like so like you you like especially when it comes to not just only like Flutter, but also in the programming, like whenever you're in a repo, you are able to navigate yourself to, you know, like find what you need. But there are a lot of folks out there that might have this problem that maybe navigate themselves yes. in Flutter ecosystem or something. It would be like, you know, like 10, 15 minutes, maybe even a oh, video totally. content like, or something. But, but this is this is why I'm wondering, like, like is, is it that content of browsing around and like just talking about stuff? But because we used to do that quite a lot. We used to, before Hump Day was on YouTube, yeah. we used to do quite a lot. We used to have people in them. We used to just navigate the code, talk about it between us, and kind of understand what's going on inside the re inside the repo. And that a lot of people getting a lot of knowledge together that way. Um, I think, yeah, I think there's there's some something to that. Anyway, move. yeah, there were a lot of I, comments I just, from I, you made in front of me during our 
Humpty Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, okay, yeah. let, 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 me, let me merge, uh, create a PR for this. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I, I just wanted to add, uh, I put a couple of my favorite aliases from my Git config in uh, here. You put it under the alias section. Uh, LOL is log one line graph decorate, which oh, yeah. makes a nice view of all the commits and all the branches that are being merged and coming out in a text form, which is great because you can do it in a terminal window. Or you can just use L a nice text a graphics mode get editor. It's also yeah, but this is this is easy because I can remote and do this too. So it's yeah. great. So it's good yeah. to know these things. Yeah. Yep. Um right. All right, moving on. Next question, I guess. Um Tommy. <laughs> Uh, which state management solution are you all using? No judgment. Just pick one that you most um, pick one that you most recently used in a the project. There you go. So, what one did you most recently use in a project, uh, Randall? Riverbud. There you go. And uh, yeah. Salee, which one did you most use in the project? Yesterday, I just uh, refactored the project to block. So, I will go with block. Yeah. <laughs> and Danielle? Oh, you're muted. 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 Ah, we got a muter. All right. Yay. <laughs> well, I, I can't have it both ways right now. Dorian's being loud. I know. <laughs> and whatever. No, it's it's um, my, I, I come from the Matt Carroll school of we usually don't need much state management. So I, uh, I, I, I've i been using inherited widget a few times and, and mostly just when I, when I build my routes, I'm injecting what I need to there for all from one place. And, and so I'm injecting it with something, you know, called a presenter. Yep. I will say I I I I just use the build and stuff and build, build my own or whatever I'm trying to do like it's fine. <laughs> yeah. um, other than that, it, I'd just say provider slash Riverpod, you know, um, block. You know, these are all yeah. very common ones. I don't think there's any like um, there's no there's no best state management solution. There's nothing that that is is key for everyone, but there's common ones. And uh, as long as you're consistent across your projects, you know, just mix and match. I mean, you could like I've used provider and block together. What wonderful you know before like as, but as long as you're consistent in the use cases where you're using them and there's and it's, and it's and it makes sense you know then i think yeah you know, use whatever you want it solves your problem yep. go for it yeah um all right uh oh that was front load i don't know how that made its way into the question <laughs> list yeah. next one uh is there any way to give constraints to a sliver widget uh i mean yes I mean, <laughs> I mean, it has sliver constraints. That's automatically whatever sliver widget uses. So perhaps you'd be more specific in what you're asking. It. Do you want to fix it at height? Is that what you're trying to say? Um, so, so perhaps you can explain your question a bit in a bit more detail. But for those that don't know, yeah. So sliver is part of the scrolling content, and uh, we have a you have a custom scroll view, which is the kind of base that most people use it's not the base of how slivers work um it's always so slow there we go um custom, so you have custom scroll view which most people use which is how you can then pass in a list of slivers into your widget the sliver app bar sliver grid and there's a lot of widgets that start with the word sliver uh padding opacity whatever safe stage you know there's a bunch of them um if you're actually interested in this um you can have a you can go look at scrollable and that's a base cast for scrollable content um and then scrollable gives you a uh, you have to give it a viewport builder and the viewport builder gives you the offset of the scroll this is something you can listen to it's a, a change note fire and you pass that over to a viewport um a viewport or a uh, there's also a shrink wrap viewport as well and this is the thing that actually takes the slivers and renders them in a list and basically all the scrolling widgets come down to these two things scrollable with a viewport uh, so if you try to do custom scrolling stuff this is where you want to go look um regarding the question was in the constraints um yeah every every sliver is given sliver constraints um and this is the, this is the whole sort of set of parameters for the sliver constraints it's quite complicated because it has to do with a lot of things to do with scrolling like the cache extent for how much should be loaded off screen um the the what's what's left of the viewport what's going to paint what's what overlaps the previous one what the scroll is what the scroll direction is like these are all like you know it, it's more complicated than, than like box constraints however um if you're kind of curious you can actually use a sliver layout builder if in a 
how to scroll list or something like this. A uh, sliver layout builder will actually give you the constraints, just like a sliver, just like a um, layout builder does. And then what's really cool about this is you can return a sliver from this, uh, um, which is also a widget. And if that sliver is a sliver to box adapter, right? Then now what you can do is you're essentially wrapping any normal box widget, which is your render box widgets, which is standard ones. Um, with this, return it from a, uh, a sliver layout builder, and now that box widget can actually react to the sliver constraints, like the scroll position and stuff. So there's some interesting things you can do when looks at these things. But yeah, um, I don't know, there's, there's plenty of complex scrolling behavior things you can do with slivers, that's what they're there for. Um, so, so you ask for a 100 pixel high, and it goes through 19 layers of indirection to become 100 pixels high somewhere. <laughs> no, there's actually, so to be honest, if you just want to give a height to a, to, a, to a sliver, I would literally just do a sliver to box adapter and inside that size box height 100. Done, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Simple, right? That's, that's the answer to that. But again, the question here is what is the question? Because give constraints to a sliver widget is, is yeah. So, um, uh, they're also like that might be the person trying to like give box constraints to a sliver and they're just totally different layout mechanisms they don't work the same so um anyway next question currently i use block observers plus notification listeners to assemble data from multiple apis for analytics is there another approach or best practices am i missing hmm. block block observers and notification listeners um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it depends on the analytics. I mean, like, you know, you, if you need to return back certain data for analytics, you're going to need to get it from somewhere. Um, whether it's block observers and block notifiers and block listeners, that's, that's whatever it is. Um, sorry, block observers and block listeners, then, then that's completely up to you. Um, the other thing you could say is uh, another approach. So this is more about object oriented design. You're going to fetch this these objects to get their properties and information to then give to your analytics um, service, backend, whatever it is. If you abstract away your analytics, you can then actually have the blocks tell the analytics library when they change. So that's, that's the difference between a push model and a pull model, right? So you're trying to do, when this analytics event occurs, go pull these, these bits of data and model artifacts, what current pages, where they scroll to, I don't know, whatever the bits of information are, and put them in your, uh, say, send the vent, whatever it is, to your analytics provider, right? But instead, what you could do is when the scroll position changes, it sends it to your, it automatically sends it to your uh, animation library. And then when you send the event, it's already got the information. So you could just do send user scroll down. You don't have to have the position because the position is already recorded in the library. So there's there's different approaches to object-oriented design to kind of slim that down. A lot of times, if you're if you smell bad code, that is, it feels bad, it feels icky. There's another approach, right? And in the non-icky way, right? <laughs> like it smells like bad code. That, that's the phrase that we kind of use. You can smell bad code. Like you get you get that kind of like icky feeling. Like oh, that doesn't that's not right. You know, and if you feel that about your own code, you know, then then yes, you 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 that's refactoring that. Is. That that's time to refactor that code. And there's always tons of different ways of doing that. Um, anything else from you guys? Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm jumping in. I, I was going to say the I, I have the opposite problem. If I ever think I'm being too clever, I'm not. Yeah, right. Well, this you know, thing like, like you, you can over engineer so easily, right? You can you can yeah. also like over optimize super easily. And I think that this is the key for me is achieve what you want to achieve, understand the problem. So this is for me when I do an OOP, so object oriented like programming, right? Is normally I, I go out and just hack away and achieve what I'm trying to achieve. And then I look at what I've done and I go, okay, now how do I refactor this to be the, the optimal solution to this problem space? Because sometimes you don't even know how to achieve the solution to your problem, right? So you need to like essentially work on that before you architect it. Does that kind of make sense? Um, so, I don't know. Are there best yeah. practices? Um, not really. Um, not that I can think of. I like mean, I, I totally agree about the part that you mentioned that you can, seem like, without even realizing over engineer the stuff in a way that you still think that it is not enough. 
So I don't know. I don't know. I, in this kind of situations, I try to keep it in the KISS principle, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you just, you just reminded me of that thing that all programmers do. And I swear, all programmers have done this. I, I'm going to get your opinion about this, but it's when you first learn about uh, interfaces, you're like, oh, I'm going to build an interface. And everything's going to be, I'm going to have an interface for everything. That way I can just replace and change anything. But you never replace and change just everything. So it ends up being a you know a waste of time to like go make interface and then keep the interface up to date with your implementations and so on and so forth. Like, like you add a lot of extra work for no so it's the same thing about like, oh, I'm gonna add an extra parameter in case in, just in case someone wants to change the type of this thing and never does the type change, right? So there's that kind of like you can fall into that case of I'm gonna add these things because it might happen might happen. yeah don't do that yeah and don't do the other case. thing is in case the other thing is writing writing yeah. an abstraction system before having done three concrete systems yeah you have to do enough real ones first and then you go oh these are in common with these but these yeah. are separate from these so that you know yeah. where to put the dials you got to know well, what what to what to bank together I, I swear so this i said this to someone else before it's like they, they like whenever you need to copy and paste something that's when you need a function Right, that yeah. code that you were going to copy paste should be in a function, and then the two places you were using that code now call the function. This is yeah. stand. This is standard. You know, uh, do not repeat yourself. Right. Yeah. Now the the that's a principle by the way, and the same as kiss, which is keep it uh, stupidly simple. Um, mm -hmm. and now the the uh, the same goes for like we just talked about abstraction and classes. It's not until you need two of these things that you go okay. Maybe they should have something in common, like a base, or they should have a, an interface that they both inherit from and they both uh, adhere to, you know? Right. And then you can start making those abstractions, right? And the, and and the, your your change of inheritance and and how your how your OP design sort of comes together. One thing yeah, that I want well, to add well. is that I just saw a comment from James Johnson saying that so you're saying you never refactor. It's not about not refactoring, but it's not about it's sorry, it's about the way that you imagine that you would be refactoring. You would be like, yeah, okay, when I refactor this, I will use these contracts as my mechanism to keep track of everything. But honestly, at the end of the day, those work like 10, 15 percent of the time. At the moment that you refactor things, things are already more different than you started off with. I, I have to say I always refactor. Is is my answer to that. I, I don't know where you got never refactor from and, and what we're just saying. I don't yeah. know. No said anything like that but the point here is i as i said before you build it bad one time and then you're a factor and you're a factor we're just saying that you can if you can get yourself tied in knots by making your system too complicated up front so therefore it's harder to refactor right we're not saying that okay if you do that then refactor and make it simpler yes of course but then why make it complicated in the first place that would simplify it right it's better to approach it the other way around keep it simple at the beginning and then make it more complicated as you need the code to become more complicated to right. solve the problem space you have, right? So, uh, yeah. And also, always... don't, don't be afraid of doing scorched earth where you start and look at yeah. something and you've built up an entire structure. Don't be so invested in that code that you don't consider that maybe you made the wrong fundamental decision at the beginning <laughs> and yeah. you just really, yeah. really need to start over. Because I've done that on projects, yeah. Yes. Because the thing, the thing is, people think. Sorry, I, I really, I, I get so often. Yeah. People, people think that the code that they've written is somehow invalidated when you do that. You have you learned so much building that first copy. You put it to one side. You use it as reference material for building your second version of the system, whatever that this behavior is that you're doing. Right. That is fundamentally refactoring. Right. Like, like you don't, refactoring isn't just like renaming and, and and moving some functions around. No, no, you can just. Yeah completely scorch earth, redo your entire thing based on the ideas and knowledge you gain from building your first version. And that's why I said yes. about when we hack something together first, get it working, and then I'll approach that in an architected fashion, you know? Right. Well, well, the only thing I want to add on. in is oh. that um, when you want to refactor, the better tests you've got, the more confidence you can uh, have refactoring. And yeah. so, you know, especially it, for that, that already working code. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it is super simple. Depending on complicated systems, as you refactor stuff to miss doing something, and and a lot of time when I feel like that's going to happen when I'm doing some refactoring, I'll issue put fix me or to do straight in there, right? And that will be in my my changes for my for my for my uh, what's this? 
So they, <laughs> you're muted. You're muted. Plus you. one. I just did plus one. Yeah, I, plus one. <laughs> I just showed my, I just showed my, you know, like support for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. We need, we need that, that kind of like little thumbs up icon on the screen. Yeah, yeah. I want to get actually a pillow actually, kind of thing. Yeah. There's, a, there's, I think there's a new feature that we can actually use for reactions at some point. Actually, we should, we should give that. Yeah. Go. Anyway, um, yeah. so um, yeah. Anyway, well, let's let's move on because we're we're talking yeah. about some. We went completely off topic of that question, but hopefully people are getting some. <laughs> It's not unusual uh, for this show. No. <laughs> Go on, Nikos. What's your question? Hey, is there any update on static metaprogramming? According to the Dart roadmap, it will be released in Dart 3, mid-23. Any ideas on possible date or what will be the first version to include? Um, mid-23. So no... Mid-23, exactly. just like it we says. We know exactly what you know there. <laughs> However, I will... However, I will mention a few uh, about, what, three or four shows ago, we did some, we tried it out live on the stream. Yeah. We did um, you can go enable experimental mode and there's documentation on this and you go look at the experimental flags we actually did post the information in the in that in that one and uh, you can go try out some of these new features there have been a lot of commits in that area i've been watching all the commits day by day almost hour by hour and there's been a lot in that area in the compiler in the testing so i'm sure more and more of it is working today than when we tried a month ago so yeah uh, and maybe that pace means something. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see. I let's don't move, know. Let's move on. Next question. Yeah. Tony, does Flutter support Apple TV? Okay. I think it's... I'm going to say no. However, there is a yes to this. So Apple Ooh. TV supports web and Flutter supports web. Uh... So in short, you can build in Flutter, you output a web app, and then you wrap that web app, that PWA, for the Apple TV stuff, and then you can then display it with Apple TV. So there are ways of doing this. Um, and it's strictly not a platform-specific thing. I think, does Apple TV only support web? I can't remember. They might have some native APIs. I'm not sure. sure they must. To be honest, I've not even tried Apple TV. I don't own Apple TV. I don't plan to open Apple TV. So I'm really the wrong person. <laughs> but from my knowledge, from what I remember, when I last looked at this stuff, it was supports web. And, and flutter supports web. Mm. Any, any comments? There, there's also a talk from Alexander Denisov, who was like working for an agency that they actually did this, like they made apps for Android and Apple TV. So you can check. Let me. Nope. <laughs> uh oh. Nice how, no. how not to click the, click the close button. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice it happens. happens. Yeah, oh, 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 well, Bring him in. Well, welcome Bring back, Silly. <laughs> that was the wrong button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Nice. Oh my God. I, I wanted to go to the YouTube to bring back the video, but <laughs> that didn't happen. So yeah. he did a talk at uh, <laughs> Vikings. At Flood Vikings. Vikings, yeah. So oh, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. you can check it yeah. out so as well. This channel, this channel hosts a bunch of Flutter Viking videos. If you go to the videos, you'll probably find the, the one we're talking about. There you go. Let's yeah. let's, let's let's move on to the yeah. question. Yes. Abdullah says, uh, is there any way is there any other services like render railway Haruka alternative that can deploy our REST API made with Dart for learning purposes, hobby projects? Yes. Google well, Cloud, right? Here you go. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, like any. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, Sully. <laughs> any, uh, any, Sully. But they, all, all the cloud providers run Do can deploy Docker. All, all, every single one of them can deploy a Docker container, and with Dart, you can build a Docker container. Yeah, yeah. The, there's a small company called AWS, so <laughs> you can. <laughs> you know, you know, like uh, you can about. actually check it out. I actually did a demo with one of our products for Dart Frog, and I will do another one with the Lambdas as well in the in two weeks or so. About basically, you know, like how you can use Dart Frog or like create a Dart backend and host it on AWS. So cool. But AWS is a um, tool called Copilot, which is an interesting name, <laughs> and I showed mm. it in a like video that how you can use it with that for just you know like to see how it is and aws has a free, free tier so you can use it for learning purposes and your hobby projects as well 
there's um if you want to go look at like doing some of this stuff there's um there's this project here i'll post the link in the chat this is um uh it's about running uh functions as a service with dart on google cloud run it's made by uh, the gcp team and made some really cool people including uh the other kevin moore not the kevin moore in chat now look craig's here a few other people um yep. and uh this has got some other things but yeah if you uh use the docker I think there's an examples and you know, like hello world there you go so um here's your docker file here's an example of a docker file right so this this is about building using stable version of dart you don't, you don't have to know anything about that but the idea is that you build whatever you want to build you can create um, a http server inside your main you don't have to use cloud functions that like they're doing here um and use that docker file and before you know it your server will be up and running and it is literally like this like you know you just got a main function that serves your content. In this case, it's serving a cloud function, but you know you can just serve HTTP REST for API and uh, have your entire backend in Dart. Um, there's a lot of plenty. I did a I actually did a three part series on the Boring Show with Craig on doing just that on Cloud Run, so that might be something to check out. But also, you could deploy that once you built your Docker container with Docker on your local machine. You could deploy that to AWS. So, there you go. Cool. All right, moving on. Next question. Dinesh, does Flutter have better performance than React Native, especially when accessing native functionality such as fingerprint, GPS, camera, etc.? Uh, you're asking that you're really asking the wrong audience here, right? Of course, we're going to say yes, right? Um, I will. I will mention though that you specifically uh, when accessing native functionality, um, uh, Flutter does some of a of a slightly better job. Um, I'd say, um, but that's really mainly around UI. Um, it pretty much, on, I probably would say, like functional wise, it's probably on par the same. Um, there is a difference though that the Flutter code is compiled to to uh, uh, native machine code, meaning that it has a slightly higher performance than the being interpreted or even just in time compiled by by a JavaScript uh, engine, which is what happens with React Native apps. Um, yeah, anything to add to you guys? I mean, the, the fact of the matter, Dinesh, is that any of these kind of things, access, let's say accessing the camera, um, and what I, again, it's very much a use by use case by use case. For example, fingerprint is did the user ask the user to present, present the finger? Did they did it? Did the operating system complete the authentication for their fingerprint? That's literally it, and there's like zero performance change between the two because they're literally asking the operators to perform a function returning a variable like there's no noticeable impact right in your application to be clear however things like maybe camera in the sense that maybe has to if if for example um in the sense of react native it's using camera in a web view that has to go for another couple of layers there's probably performance things with the graphics there's some other things going on there probably the net because the way that um the, the way that camera works in flutter in the camera plugin is that it actually tells the camera to output to a graphics texture and then flutter displays that graphics texture that's a lot more efficient than than using then essentially how a web might do web might do it but it's another level deeper very similar so in that case that might be more efficient but to be honest like pick the tool that's best for you if you know react native and you want to use react native, you use react native if you want to try flutter use flutter use flutter yeah that's what use what works Use whatever gets you paid. That's the important. <laughs> right. Oh, I mean, this is, this is I think, this similar is question. Like, Flutter or React Native as both support Android and iOS. We're going to say Flutter. You're in the Flutter community channel. Um, yep. <laughs> I, to be personally honest, I, I like the way that I can develop really quickly on desktop and then run it on the device. And, you know, you just, it's, it's, I feel like there's a lot more, when you do React Native, there's a lot more fussing you have to do, a lot more things and you just avoid all that so well and I, I also yep. do web stuff same thing you can do web stuff and the same you know very much more of the same code base than you would with react versus react native yeah. wow tech explorer says referring to android wear os how does one usually approach designing a companion app um first get a companion I, <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, where I mean, so I, I actually developed 
some Wear OS companion, a uh, Flutter app, a Flutter app with a with a Wear component to it. Um, but designing, I mean, I don't think I don't. Here's the thing: every app should just not have a Wear companion app, right? To be clear, like I don't need, uh, I don't need. I well, I suppose there might be a YouTube Wear app. I don't know, but I don't need uh, uh, so every app on my on my you know on my wrist in that form factor. So first of all, I'd say, is your app, because I'm assuming you've got an app and you want to make, you know how to design it for your for wearables, does it require a Wear OS one? And if so, what is the primary functionality the user would gain by having it on their wrist, right? Is it to notifications? Is it to answer messages? Is there uh, buttons they should be pressing quite often? If not, like, like they probably don't need a Wear OS companion app. It's If, if it just ends up being a, uh, uh, what you call it, a, uh, marketing gimmick, then you just wasted all your time and everyone else's time, right? So we now support Wear OS. It's like, what to 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 push a button? I don't know. Like, think, think, think. I think the design approach should be first of all, do you actually need one? And then second of all, what are the primary actions the user should be doing? Um, and then uh, you can then look about the behavior of of. Uh, there's actually lots of stuff around the UX. Of, of wearables this is like the swiping behavior going between stuff up and down left and right and tapping um in terms of the expected behavior the user has on that device and that's what you should be uh following that's what i'd say anything from you guys sorry i took yeah. forever and then i don't <laughs> answer all the points abdullah explain to me like i'm five will you ever start again this series the OG at Scott. Well, Scott's not here anymore. So, oh, ah. he started a series called Explain to Like I'm Five, I think. Yeah. Um, I think he wants to do more. If I remember rightly, he was saying he wants to do more content like that, some more, some more simplified content. Um, so I suspect the answer is yes. And yeah, we can make sure he sees this uh, comment. Yes. Yeah. We'll make sure he does that. Um, and then uh, uh, will, we, will we see new good back end framework in 2023? Mm. I'm getting loads of <laughs> like I, said, loads. I mean, I'm assuming he means Dart, in which case you've got Frog, you've got Server Pod, you've got uh, a bunch of them, and I can't even name them all. There's a bunch of shell. Conduit, 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 the the Conduit for the open source yeah. one from that used to be called Aqueduct. Um, yep. Yeah, I know. Like, there, there's a ton of them, and and to be honest, uh, if if you don't see one that does what you want to do, there's your opportunity. Yep. Learn. And go build one yourself. Don't think I can't do that. Think what do I want from this and build that. And then maybe someone else wants the same thing. There you go. Ooh, and I want ooh, the next ooh, question. Ooh, I want to see, I want ooh, to see the next ooh. question. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> First this. Oh. First this. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm. Mike. You're gonna tell us what you got cooking. Mike is Mike is being shady right now. That's that's not <laughs> fair, Mike. That's not he, fair. He that, what, what's that? What's that emoji with the eyes looking to one, one side, like shady emoji? Yeah, he needs that. There. Uh, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, or, or the, they're kind of like thinking. Right? Yep. Um, yep. Go on. What was that? What was that next one? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm curious about Simon's whiteboard content. Are you really? I can't even see it. It looks like it's maybe it uh, like like doing some math on a cube that's maybe rotated a little bit. Uh, yeah, in fact, you're you're not far off there. Hang on, can we can we can we, can we get it bigger? Mm -hmm. so, uh, see if I can wow. see if I can press the right buttons to make me bigger. Hang on. There <laughs> you you're go. bigger. Oh wow! There I can almost see it. There you go. Happy so face. Is, the happy face side. That's a good side. The happy face. Yeah. This is just representation of a texture. And then okay. the, the view fun stream in green. And I was just trying to work out some some mathematics for my 3D engine yeah. I've been working on. Right. There you go. Just trying to like it's easy to sometimes um it's a bit like that the the sort of uh, uh rubber ducking as we call it, which is that kind of like speaking to an inanimate object, explaining what you're doing. And then um that can be like a dash or a plushie or whatever, right? But the idea that you're speaking to something and the, the process of speaking out what you're doing out loud. They let you process it back in, as it were, and then you go, oh, of course it's not working because I'm doing that. And then suddenly, you right. know, you're moving forward rather than get that kind of writer's block or get stuck. And the same yep. thing happens with a whiteboard, I feel. Like the process of what's described in the whiteboard is not actually that helpful. Like you can make squiggles on a whiteboard, 
right? The meaning yeah. of something, right? Saying item or, or, you know, I don't know, whatever it is, thumbnail, right? Like, but the, the point here is not what's there. You have to, has, doesn't have to be legible. It's the process of writing it out and describing it all and piecing it together. And as I said earlier, when you're looking at code, you're looking at ob, like classes interacting and, and they're calling these different functions, moving data around and all the rest of it. That's hard to picture in your mind sometimes. So to get that out on a whiteboard or, or you know, any sort of like notepad, drive, you know, sketchbook, whatever, to get that out of your mind and contextualize it means you're then bringing it out of your, your space and bring into something uh, in the real world gives you something muscle memory, gives you a bunch of other things that you can, your, your body sort of kicks into and, and, and helps you understand the problem space. So by doing something like that and describing it and explaining it, you get to know what you're doing and that helps you feedback in the picture, picture <clears throat> how to approach a problem, let's say. My dad used to uh, grab restaurant napkins invariably. Every meal we sat down to at a restaurant, which was rare, but we went from time to time, he would reach for the napkins or take his napkin from his place setting and pull out a pen and just start drawing on it every single time we went out. It was invariable. I love that about him. He was so cool at that. He was such an inventive guy. Yep. Sorry. Next. <laughs> yeah. No. Was that was that actually? Um, I hope that answered the question. I, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. You showed your whiteboard um, content. I don't know how much better it would be. I don't understand this question, but I added it anyway. Uh, does the Win32 package work in iOS? If not, anything go over it. Um, <laughs> Global the, what? Be, the reason why this is quite funny to some of us is Win32 is Windows 32 bit, which is saying, does Windows APIs work in iOS? The answer is obviously no, because they're two different yeah. platforms. Okay. So if not, anything else? So the answer is, um, there's various packages. There is no, so first of all, Win32 package is not official. This is someone's, in fact, I say someone, it's Tim Sneed's uh, personal pet project. It's, he, he's, he worked at Microsoft before he came to, to Google and did Flutter, so he knows a lot about the API. And when he wants to do Windows apps, you need those APIs. So he's gone ahead and really done a great job at producing the library. In fact, he did a great uh, Flutter Vikings talk. So you can go check that out if you're interested. Um, Win32 FFI uh, talk. So um, there are several packages on pop.dev which are named from the kits that the iOS does. So each of their uh, subsystems and packages, they call kits. There's like cloud kit, there's camera kit, there's like video sound kit, health kit, whatever you want to call it, you go find it. There's probably you find a package that's named specifically that, that actually handles that, uh, that iOS API. I will mention that FFI now supports calling Objective-C and Swift code directly. So this means from your dark code, you can call some of these functions directly. So there's also an, uh, an avenue there that you might want to look at. But to be honest, I don't think there's anything uh, essentially equivalent to the Win32 package, which is just everything all in one place. Um, it's because it would be such a job. And um, and Apple don't have a uh, – I mean, I, I certainly have never heard of any Apple advocates in the community. They just don't – I mean, does anyone – is, is that even a role? Do you ever see – Apple is one of these companies that is over here. And you, if I you mean, want to get something answered, good luck. You put it in the forums and maybe you'll get an answer. <laughs> but it's not I an mean, official I, answer. I didn't see any also like, for example, communities and so on as well. Like, for example, Google always had GDGs. Now they have these GDSCs. I don't know. GD program obviously was part of it. Uh, Amazon has like the community builders and so on so forth, like the express program kind of thing, like the heroes. So I didn't hear anything about it from the other side. Yeah. You know, if, if Apple had a car kit, they could be doing Knight Rider, but okay. Never mind. I, I just, I just saw what I so said. It's, it's just a distraction here. Um, <laughs> And Mike, Mike just said in the, Mike just said in the chat. Um, he sent me he sent me a picture on Slack of what is what they're cooking. I know about the project. In fact, I know probably about the project quite early on that you're talking about, Mike. But I don't know if you want to, yeah. to be publicly revealed. So you have to. That's not really up to me. That's up to your. Uh, dev also, dev this, this is not fair. Like we are four people on this live stream, and only one of us gets a treatment that is unfair. Okay, <laughs> it's not fair, right? You're right. Now. 
Right. I mean, I'm, right now I'm pro I'm protesting Mike. Okay. I, I mean, I'm not protesting I'm, because he fixed I the said, problem. Okay. So, so Mike Mike literally just said it's nothing secret. Go ahead. So there you go. So are you sure, All right. Mike? I, I I will open up. I'll tell you what, I'll open up the, the, the image you sent me on stream. How's that? Do you want me to do that? I'll do that. Um, okay, so, also, can um, we tweet about it after uh, <laughs> after the live stream? Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't take away Majid's glory like that. You can't do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's um, the reality. So let's, let, let's, let's see if this uh, works. Um, Mike's typing. He's like, stop, stop, okay, stop. Yeah. So, so he's just saying <laughs> parts are still going to be changing, basically. This isn't final. But uh, uh, let's see if I can get this up on stream. Uh, oh, it's too long. I need to zoom in and probably scroll. Let's see if we can do this. Hang on. Damn. So the project's called Target. It's a work in progress. Web application framework for Dart. Target's Ooh. a web application framework for Dart with developer experience and simplicity in mind. Out of the box, Target provides support for root, uh, for routing and handling HTTP requests, web sockets, proxies, middleware, views, and more. And then there's you can see here introduction, installation, CLI, so the little command line interface, configuration, lots of core concepts, controllers, middleware, requests, responses, web sockets, all the usual suspects there. Uh, deployment API reference. There you go. So um, we're going to be seeing uh, a, a lovely another another web package. To, to to compete with frog and shelf and all the rest of it, I guess. And uh, what was that? Server pod? I don't know. There's lots of them. So so probably yeah, more, built more on it's probably this built on shelf thing. though. Yeah. I would hope. I would hope if it's not built on top of shelf, it at least has, has compatibility with shelf because so many great shelf packages for middleware and right. so on. So yeah. to to be able to like have like add shelf middleware or something like that that just lets you put those things. Right. Those other I'm sure in. Mike can answer this. You know. Because it's public yeah, now. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know. Fully. Oh yeah, yeah. This is fully compact with shelf. Uh, there you go. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> cool. So yeah. So right. so, so, so yeah, I, I yeah. asked that question earlier. This more more stuff is coming out this year. There you go. Yep. Nice. And you heard it here. You heard it yeah. here first. <laughs> heard it here first. Yes. Yeah. We scoop the world. <laughs> yes. All right, I think okay, that... you can see that when you place with someone's conscience, it always works. Like here, when I mentioned that, I don't want to be left out. We got an announcement. <laughs> yeah, but does it support Go? This is like this, is like, like like that early. What's that, what's that thing? Uh, but does it play Crisis? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sure Mike will answer in the chat all your questions. Um, if you yes. <laughs> yeah. He's on his own I don't, show I have now. no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I literally take, never, never used it before. Yeah. So, you know. um, um, anyway. I think that I think that's it by the looks of it. Um, that's it. Live coding now. So, yeah, I'm just going to say, like, what else? Do we have any Do we have any comments on what people like to... See, I've coded. Oh, I don't know. Like, is yes. there like a concept? Is there? I don't. I mean, like, I, I, I thought the question we kind of left with these uh, showing, you know, zooming the image and then taking the results of that and ah. displaying that. Photo view. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's what I thought. Photo view. Let me just mix in more notes here. Yeah. Photo view. Uh, so, what methods are getting called when navigating back to a specific screen? Was what I wrote earlier. That that other one. That uh, one was the one. Photo you view. Me to remember. Yeah. Um, was there anything else? Mm. No, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> um, right. Um, oh, right. 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 said shaders. Do, can we can we play with shaders? Um, well, I think maybe we can do something. Um, they've actually got some really nice. Shiny new shader support on um on, on master. So we'll see how that goes. Um right. Let's, so maybe uh, we should see. talk about it next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um I I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? We'll have we'll have um, plenty to do next week. Plenty. Uh, plus do. one for image image editing. How about graphics? So graphics we're gonna leave for some other people to talk about some other day. We'll just leave it there. Okay. 
uh, plus one for imaging. But we're, I think that would be in person. Maybe we need that person here in one of the live streams, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe, like... Maybe, I, I, maybe someone who's going to be talking about it at Flutter London, uh, Flutter Forward Extended London. Yeah, I, yeah. I shouldn't even do that. Yeah, so, I heard. I, I heard. So that person would be nice to have here, you know, just saying. Yeah. So we, we just... We just uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, at the uh, at the um, I can say it, flutter forwards extended London. We've got. I'm trying to find the image here. Um, there's a time I can't find it. I've lost it. Wait, there we go. Yeah, this this is it. Yeah, let's share this present. Uh, share. I don't know. There you go. So if you're if you're interested and uh, and you can make it, uh, come along to uh, Flutter Forward Extended London, and uh, you'll find bring your ideas to life with Flutter and GraphX. Over at Vigo Lopez. So uh, yeah, it's an awesome library. If you haven't tried it, try it out. There's some great examples on the uh, on the pub package for it. But um, he's he's going to be doing uh, he's going to be coming to London to to do a talk on it. So uh, is this is this to try to bring back some redeeming value to ending your package name in X? No, it's graphics. <laughs> it's, it's graphics. <laughs> it's really graphics. Graphics. Graph X. X graphics. Right. It's a graphics. Right. Graphic. Right. Right. I'm just saying. There's a <laughs> disdain for things that end in X. Otherwise, on this show. Yes. I'm curious. Pack your bags, Mike. <laughs> Pack your bags <laughs> come to London. Uh, yeah. 30th of, um, is the, I might as well promote it here. Why not? It's the 30th yeah. of um, uh, January. Okay, January. Uh, <laughs> this month. SpaceX. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find that. Whilst I try and talk, I'll try to find the event page so I can post it in the chat. And in um, all fairness, at the beginning of this, Randall specifically said we could plug ourselves. Yes. Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. 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 That's my that's my plan. I'm sticking to it. So um, there is links in the chat if anyone wants to join. And I'll just briefly bring it upstream before we move on to bigger and better topics. Um, let's see, here you go. Khan's gonna be there too, right? So uh, Khan's gonna be here. Uh, developer relations engineer at Flutter doing a talk. Rodrigo and um, Joachim. Uh, Joachim Van der Plug. I'm gonna say his name wrong. Wolf, his, his name's yeah. Wolf on the on on thing. And so we've got a fun filled evening with a lot of a uh, lot of cool talks, food and chats. And we've also got um, myself, Swav, Andre Bizotto, uh, Rodrigo, uh, Renuka Sumith, all, all coming. And we're just gonna have some good sort of networking and expert chat. So um, so feel uh, feel free to come along. So, um, I, I'm really be, upset just, that it is like at the end of this month because normally. Okay. I, I made a promise to give a talk around that time so I cannot join and it really breaks my heart. So if you have a chance, anyone else, just be there for me. And <laughs> email, him and him, email him, tell him what he missed. <laughs> exactly. And, and no, I just want to plug that I I want to plug that I'm, be, I'm speaking at two different virtual events um, uh, within the week or two after Flutter Forward. Uh, sort of official, semi-official, uh, uh, forward extended stuff. Uh, I'll have more URLs next week on this show. Cool. And I might be doing something Sorry. next week anyway. So, yeah. Right. Cool. All right. Maybe we uh, all so. might be doing next week something next week. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what's happening next week? What's this event yeah. everyone's talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's see. What is the best way? You, should, you could solve one of the the Flutter code labs for the uh, the daily event. You could solve oh. one of those live. Well, you know I mean, you don't need one of those. No, right. Um, let's see. So we want to. We were talking about uh, what photo view? Should we do a photo view thing? Let's do a photo view. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Everyone, cool. confirm. Do your RSVPs. Get in there now. This website. Go sign up. Be there. Be in London. I'll be square. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, all right. So let's uh, create a new. Where's my new gun? This is, I've, I've increased my font size and everything's massive now. Right. Uh, yeah. So we'll say um, profile avatar. Uh, avatar. Dot, dot, we'll call it that. 
Uh, so first of all, what was the package we needed? It was like photo view or something? Right. Is it photo underscore view? Or was it photo view one word? Good question. Uh, that's not in, is it? Let's go have a look at pub. Photo underscore view. I missed that one. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, so that we have that dependency. So uh, let's begin with uh, our standard main and run app. Um, let's take this uh, widget for our app. Uh, let's call it avatar app. Uh, yeah. Anyone has any better names, please be my guest. Let's take this earbuds out. Hopefully, there's no echo. App. Shit. Naming is hard. Uh, it is hard. Very hard. Uh, are you there? Yes. We are now. Okay, I can hear you. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Right, let's try that again. Yeah. Here we are. So, photo view. Run out. Let's let's go. Let's... You could probably get rid of us at the bottom there. Because we don't need to be on this. No, it's all right. It's fine. Oh, that way we can point at things. Over there. Oh, no, over you there. Can, you can do If you turn <laughs> off your picture, by the way, you do get removed from the stream, but your voice is still heard. Yeah, I know. So if you do want to turn off your cameras, that's fine. And you that's can still the, comment and talk. That's the least interesting part of me right now. The best part of me is Crater Lake behind me. That's the best part. All right. So the usual, um, what do we want? Material app. And a uh, if I check my bag, it just gets in the way right now. And then home. I think I start off every little thing with something like this, but it gets us to the place we need. Right. So we were talking about having a something like a profile screen, and then you tap on the the picture of the person, and then it will let you adjust it, pick one and adjust it, and then show, then we go back to the profile screen, it shows that image cropped in the, in the right position. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's do that then. Um, let's call this profile screen. Someone, <laughs> hey, someone's waiting for you, Randall. They want the karaoke li lyrics. I know, I know. Um, also, yeah, you um, never close your eyes um, anymore. I'm sorry, I think I question one ago. What are fragment shaders in in Flutter? What is the what is the use case from? Well, exactly that. Like, so the fragment shaders are essentially think of a fragment. It's it's essentially a fragment of a um, of a triangle. Um, but basically, think of it like a pixel and consider it as a pixel shader. It means that you can change, choose, have some code that runs for every pixel of something to choose what it is. And, uh, and if you if you're interested in understanding a bit more about shaders or how they work, check out shadertoy.com. It's actually shaders in your browser using WebGL. Um, I would not recommend you open them right now. The Shader Toy website is very resource intensive. I've warned you, <laughs> but yeah. save that for later. Um, you you can go check it out and have a play around. You can literally edit shaders on the web page, hit compile, and see what they do. And there's brilliant examples in there of existing shaders that. Um, that will you can go work in Flutter. Um, for the main, the question there was like, what is the use case for them? And that is just effects. So like, um, some time ago, I did like a page turn effect, right? Imagine like you're you you have a you're trying to do like a book, a virtual book inside your app, and you want that kind of curl page turn effect. Well, that's something that you just can't do with normal widgets, right? That's the a curl is something that's a three dimensional thing that is very hard to represent in any two D widgets. So in that case. You would um, uh, 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 want to use the shaders on that. Um, someone asked, um, and feel free, Randall, to to relay chat questions. I'm not going to keep an eye on it. Um, someone's okay. asked here, um, Simon, what do you have? Why do you have at immutable in your stateless widgets? Mine don't. So I added that to my template. In fact, they do. Your widgets do have it, but you don't know they have it. So if you go look on the site inside widget, you'll see the base widget class says at immutable on it. This didn't used to be the case, and that's why it's on mine right now. But basically, it means that if you try, and I, I'm going to show you 
right now one of the most common pitfalls of most early Flutter developers, and that is I want to pass in a variable, let's say um, my name, to this uh, to this widget, and I say it's called string name, and this dot name, and it's a required parameter. Now this is perfectly valid code. However, it is um, it is very you know perfectly valid code. If I get rid of the constant, valid. Value, that, totally that's totally valid. But it's actually going to complain around and say that. Um, Oh, it says we're well, going to play about that. This is completely valid. Now, the, the warning thing again is um, I can use a constant constructor because it's time with constant, sure. And then down here, it's now complaining that because um, name's not final, uh, yeah. that name is not final, and that is the warning that we're getting here. This class inherits from a mark, inherits from, or is or inherited from a, a class marked with at immutable, which means instant fields are not final when they should be. And this is the basically adding this to the top will give you that. Now, string speak is not needed anymore, but I find it quite uh, a visual uh, representation of knowing that this class is mutable. So that's all. But all at symbol, um, all of these at symbol things are uh, and they're called annotations, and all annotations are optional in terms of they are not required for any functional com compilation of your code. They are there for hints. To tell you as a developer how you should be doing something. Now they're right. also being used by by code generation to again give hints about how to generate code. So all annotations are are hints. Think of them that way. Um, uh, so uh, isn't, yeah, there, case, isn't there also a linter for that too? Um, uh, a linter for the immutable for for widgets. Yeah. Uh, no. No, there isn't. But um, you can turn definitely turn off the the rule for. Um, the annotation rules, should I say, for these. And I think that's what you're talking about, which is, um, yeah, must be immutable, I think it is. Yeah, there's some links in that area somewhere. Yeah, there's a must be, I think this is it. Yeah, hang on. Um, but but again, the links, the way the links work are in, are in, um, uh, which, what's the word? Um, sorry, I'm just trying to find it. Um, one time I try to find the lint list and I can't find the lint list. And while you're looking for that, I want to give a plug, a shout out mm -hmm. for very good analytics from our friends oh, at BGV. Yeah. Very good analytics turns on no. a lot of lints that we don't normally have on, and they're very good. They're very, very good. Very good. Is it very good analytical? Very good analytics. Yeah, anal very good analytics, yeah. I think is the name. I, I think it's analysis, right? Yeah, very good oh, very good I'm analysis. Sorry, no. Very good yeah. analysis. Yeah. But by the way, like for the people who hasn't been around before the meta as a company, there was meta package actually yes, <laughs> dealing yeah. with this immutable it's, stuff. It's, and it's, it's it's That's yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it, it's still is. Sorry. Now my brain is thinking in my native tongue than English. So it, there's it, still it, the package. Just be clear. Yep. This yeah. still, this meta package still defines a bunch that you can use here. Always throws. Yep. And this, this is a helpful hint to to uh, when a function always throws to uh, tell the um, analyzer uh, analyzer these things. Yeah. These are all hints. Do not yep. store experimental factory immutable internal um, is test. In fact, there's one in here. Must call super, which is also a common one to yeah. use. Um, right. That means that if you try and override a method, it must call the super method, right? And it will warn you as such. Yeah. Um, and also, before also, the null safety, there was the required, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, yeah. Now required. Yeah. This has gone the way of the dinosaur. This is this is essentially deprecated for yeah. dart and null safety dart. There's protected, which is another one that people miss. So, yeah. so that's also quite helpful. It'll warn you if you try and access this in a public for a non-inherited class. It will give you a warning, so you shouldn't be doing that. You can also turn these warnings, by the way, into errors. So your code yeah. won't compile. That's used your analysis options for that. Seal classes. Um, results there is also down here visible for testing which is another very common one so when you need to like um give your class uh, let your class be accessible to a wider audience um uh sorry i've lost the chat window whatever it is oh well um oh no there you go it goes away. sorry um uh visible for testing so so let's say uh in a test case you need to override like a variable you can make a setter which uses uh, visible for testing. And if you try using your normal code, it will just give you, an, you can make an error or give you a warning at least. So you can't do this. So 
Um, all these things are just there to sort of help. But again, all these things are, look, always throws is a class instance. Yeah. Then when you make an instant, when we make an instance of that class, now it makes it a global constant. Then all you do is you put at in front of it, and now it's a thing. So watch this class, <laughs> right? Now I can go up here on top of my, we do it, my annotation. Uh, like so, should, should work. I don't have a disruptor. That'd be why it's probably work, not working. Hang on. Says const. Right. So there you go. Now I've got instance of this as an annotation. Now, if I wanted to add some variables to this, I could. Um, but also, what you can do now is say const my. You can call it whatever you want, right? I'm just saying my annotation, obviously, mm -hmm. is an instance of this. Now the at sign, and now I can use that instance instead of the constructor. That is how annotations work. There's yeah. nothing magical about them. They're just meta. -data. This is great for your own code as well. If you want to give attributes and things just for literally your own purposes of annotating your code to give you more information, right? And it's functional information because when I let's say I could say this class, uh, let's say I don't know, um, let's say call this like. Uh, I don't know, let's call this a power reference. I don't know. And then um, what I want to say is give this a dynamic, um, I don't know, uh, no, we can give it a type. I don't know, let's just see type. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work. We'll find out. It's got type. Um, You're typing off the screen, by the way. Our, our faces oh, are definitely sorry, covering. Your faces are behind there. Yeah, I scrolled up. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. So I've just done my annotation, power references. Let's give now. So now I have a class called power reference, passes a, a, a type in, and then up here I could now say uh, this is uh, to a string. There you go. So now I've just added an extra reference to an object. So maybe this is like some inherited object or something else. And now I could come on, click on that, and get to the documentation. So I've made up a, a cool little reference to inside of my class for whatever reason that makes sense. And then I could also document this as to what it is and the reason why you know, it should be used. But yeah, annotations are just that. Um, code generation looks at the annotations and finds annotations to, to generate code. And that's kind of going to come on. Anyway, back to, back to, back on topic, as we say. So, I so. By the way, the, the I was pop. thinking of was the, that you need, for immutable classes, it has to be a, uh, it has to be a const constructor, which would yes. catch the fact that, we, which would catch that because that's a const constructor, then the string yeah. name would People, not work. Like all of these should be. Uh, that's actually another one. Yeah, Con uh, immutable yeah. class must be constant or something like that. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so that, that lets you know that's going to be final. So. Yeah. Similar thing. Anyway, let's um, let's move on here. So, uh, what do we want? We want uh, so a scaffold, and uh, its body is going to be a column. All right. And then. Uh, which we have, we'll have a center widget. Let's give it a little behind the top, 32. Um, uh, uh, Simon. <coughs> then, uh, I love getting back to my day job, everybody. So thanks for having me. Yeah, no, no, cool. Thanks for dropping me. And I'll, 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 I'll see you, uh, Sally, uh, next week. And yeah, yeah, I'll you will. I'm really excited. Me okay. too. Take care. Oh, I, bye I'm bye. Not, I'm, I just to be, I'm not going to be there at the event. So, but I'll, I'll see you here on, on the stream, hopefully, next week. Or all right. From the event. We'd love to have you two from the event on the, on the stream and tell us all about things. So, yeah. We'll see how cool. it goes. Thanks. Yeah. See you then. Um, all right, so um, let's see. Uh, center, and we want uh, there is actually was it circle avatar? I never really use it. Do you guys use circle avatar? Let's, let's see, because this actually takes an image provider, which totally isn't what we want here. So, um, I think we're gonna, I'm gonna use our own, so we'll just do a material, and on material, it has an option of saying circle. Right, me. Um, we can also add clip into that and other things, and then the color of our thing we'll do as a 
yellow for now right and then we also want to fix this um So officially it's an it's just gonna be a square aspect ratio, but actually I want to give this a fixed size. So there's actually a square and then you give it a dimension, which just gives it the same width and height. Uh, so I'm gonna say what 72, uh, I guess. All right, so this is complaint because it's gonna be constant right now, but what we, we can fit around that in a minute. Um all right, so that I think is now time to run this. So um I guess Windows desktop, hit play. I think things are a bit smaller on the desktop environment, so I'll probably oversize my sizes in a minute. Let's get that compiling. So, um, come on, right, honestly, that's doing that. Anything, any other questions coming? Anything else we want to talk about? Um, what's this? <laughs> Would it be possible to see Firebase crash list errors within the IDE with the Flutter plugin like the app quality insights in Android Studio? Um, you, I mean, there's nothing I know of, but you can go make yourself a plugin and do that, and then everyone else can use it. So make a, I'm sure the app quality insights is probably open source, and you could probably go find it in GitHub somewhere. Um, that's what I think for that. Um, yeah. Okay, so here's our application right yeah. now. We have a little yellow circle, Simon. Uh, let's make that uh, a bit bigger. All right, so cool. Now let's give that a border. Things on we have a nice little border and a drop shadow. Um, let's put a shape, and it's a circle border in this case. And then the border side. Eccentricity. Ex what? What? What is eccentricity? Am My English is not that circle? good, man. So. <laughs> it's a rectangle. Zero draws a circle. One draws an oval touch all sides. Oh, that's and like that's how oval is. It's the is. angle, exactly. Oh. Yeah, but like, I've never, that's a new parameter. I've not seen that before. So. <laughs> it must See, be an eccentric in, in, this, in this program, you learn even English. <laughs> yes. Right. Well, no, what eccentricity means, I'm just being like, it's, it's just. Yeah, anyway. Wait. I had no idea what the hell is that was. To be honest. That was interesting, yeah. Uh, all right, let's use orange and then uh, width three. And I can see what it looks like. All right. Why have I got an error? Because. Yes. Oh. Okay, so. Uh, Border radius is not null or shape does not null. I think because of this. Remember, yeah, that's just, oh, you know why? Uh, type is circle. Yeah, you can't. So basically, um, type is implied as a circle border, but we don't care about that. So a uh, circle border is going to make it a circle, but also. Yeah. A border, so. Okay, so now we have our little silly shape. Now, we want to turn this into a button and we want to give it a default image. So um, I guess we're going to need some assets. I don't think I have any assets set up on here. So let's, let's get a, um, uh, let's have a look here. Also, this is a website that generates random people's faces, like computer generated faces. Isn't there one of those? Really? Is there? I have no idea. AI is... generate. Uh, profile picture uh, let's see what comes up generate i think photo. there was a dot uh, photos apparently is yeah. a thing generate a photo just, just generate one i don't i don't care. wow browse photos. Wow. <laughs> anyway, which, which, which ai generated face shall we have oh, oh my great. god that wow. really scares me that's smart sort of wow <laughs> smart but oh. scary I, yeah, I, I'm I'm out of words. That that was. It's weird. more scary than smart to be honest. <laughs> All right, so we have we out. have moved to uncanny Silicon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Profile up game genie guy. Um, and let's check. Wow, that oh, that's cool. 
That's just weird. <laughs> what the hell? Well, 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 that there's a, as, as something that generates faces. Yeah. Oh. So assets. Uh -huh. But does right. it do the backside of their heads too? How are we going to get 3D models out of this? Actually, they do. Yes, they do. No. Oh, no. I was just thinking out loud. I no, should be no, careful no, what I think out loud. If, you, if anyone's interested in AI stuff, you should check out Two Minute Papers on YouTube. Yeah. It's a great channel for that kind of stuff. Oh, man. Right. So whenever you change your assets, you need to, because it needs to reload them in the distribution, uh, you normally need to uh, fully restart your application. Um, but before I do that, let's go set in here a child widget called an ink. For those that don't use ink, this is where you use an ink. Um, so in this case, we're going to use ink.image, and uh, the image is going to be a asset image. Asset. Um, so... James, James said, I've used it for UX designs. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably oh, that the, is the, the biggest the, the, use the case. Yeah. yeah. Is that Adam? I don't think that's Adam. That's uh, No, this is IntelliJ yeah. in, with the new beta UI enabled, uh, which you can get to from the settings. So here we go. So this is... Um, painting our ink, the ink dot image paints to the surface of the parent material widget. And that then paints the border on top. Now you notice it's not clipped, but by default nothing clips. Now ideally you don't want to clip. Um, you can actually give a shape to quite a few things. Um, remember what you can in here, but you know what? I don't remember. I don't see it as an option. It might be uh, I'm just going to clip it. Just lazy. By the way, someone asked if it's Atom, no, it's IntelliJ idea. It is the new UI. So if you use it, you can go to your settings and enable the new UI of IntelliJ. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, okay, so we've got a little profile. Let's turn it yeah. into a button. So let's wrap our ink in an ink well. And on tap, not how we do anything just yet. I'm going to make this const things and this for the minute. Okay, so now when I tap, yeah. I get like the splashy effect. Yeah, ink well. And ink. Um, you got ink. So, <laughs> so that's that ink well. So now we'll create another screen. Why? Why is it an image asset? Image dot asset. So, so image. So watch this. If I change this to an image dot asset. Right, it's a common again, another common mistake people get. So, yeah, so now what happens is when I tap on it, look, it's still tapping, but you don't see the ripple effect because the ripple effect is painted on the material widget that's underneath your image. Yeah, so you need to make sure that the contents of what you're trying to draw that has the ripple effect is, is where you draw your image. Now, there's no point having another layer for the image, especially when I want stuff on top. So, ink dot ink or image inks are drawn on top of materials yeah Ooh, the ink cool. of the material so yeah. that's where that comes from now i can have a child to this and i could have like a text with it saying i don't know a b whatever and now a b is there but it's probably really small um <laughs> It's there, trust him, okay? It's there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I can't see it, but it's there. I know it's there. Let's, 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 <laughs> this turns into a bit philosophical thing. Uh, you know? no, <laughs> I can't see it, but it's there. <laughs> let's give it Let's give it a style. And then a stilly. A stilly. Yeah. This. Um, style, still yeah. I'm seeing it. There you go, AB. Oh, yeah. there it is. Right yeah. in his eyes. It's great. Right, right, right where you need them. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right, so, if it was, um, oh, oh, it could be glasses. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Oh I'm glad I. I'm yeah. glad I don't play with this stuff because otherwise <laughs> I'd never get anything done. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, I wonder if there's like a glass. Is there a glasses emoji? It's funny. No, I don't want, no stop, stop. No, <laughs> 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 uh, 
there we go. There's, there's, does he look, what does he look like with glasses emoji? Oh. <laughs> it, it, it looks it looks super. We have weird. another one. Let's try that one. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it needs to be positioned. <laughs> Oh, anyway, oh, so this, this is too good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, how would you anyway, position that right. properly? How okay, by the way, guys, I need to also that. jump off. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you for, for having me next week. Probably we will see each other, hopefully, around here as well. Yeah. Take oh, yeah. care, okay? Yeah, sure. Thanks. All right, yeah. man. Bye bye. Have Take a good care. one. Yes. You're going to leave me alone me. with Simon. All right. There you <laughs> go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look at that. That's great. How did you move it? Oh, you've got an offset. Transform.translate. Oh, my God. Look at that. Just the, so, right, the um, right tool. The right so tool. anyway, do you know be really funny if someone chooses an avatar in your, in your own app and suddenly they get, like, you do, like, AI for their like, face <laughs> and then you can, like, right put a pie hat on them? That would be awesome. <laughs> or, like, or so, or so, every person gets dark shades or something. That would be, that'd be uh, brilliant. Well, it's what Stack Overflow does during winter time with their winter uh, <laughs> icons. So, yeah. Yeah, same thing. All right, we haven't actually got to the interesting bit yet, so let's do that. So, yeah, yeah, really. This is all distracting. So, um, so we'll show you profile avatar picker. We're, we're so um, good at uh, being our own yak shaving. <laughs> yak shaving. It's All right, right, so then this is going to be a scaffold, and then on the screen. And no, I'm not singing that at karaoke. Not singing <laughs> the act shaving. <laughs> Rot void. Oh, anyone feel free to ask questions about what I'm doing. If you can. Yeah, I'm watching for the questions. <clears throat> Make the glasses wider. Uh, when we when we tap on the item, so this obviously is all in line right now. So we'll probably take out this. The size is not a constraint of our widget, but the material is all our profile. Uh, image widget whatever so let's let's extract it out say let's call it uh profile button avatar button yeah let's extract it out makes it a bit nicer uh, in place of all of this it's a little bit more legible yeah those mornings right so um let's see so we're on the screen we want to navigate to this screen when you tap on it so yeah nav navigator of context push this uh, dot route oh, oh yeah i didn't make it stuck in Also, that's a nice way of navigating to the screen. Right, click. Yay, we can't go back. It's okay. gone. It's gone. It's, it's gone. It's got actually navigate to the next screen. The next screen doesn't actually have anything on the top. So oh, I think we'll, yeah. give, we'll give both an app, a default app bar, just so that we can get uh, the back button. Because <laughs> that would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. So I click on it. There we go. Hit back. I go back. Oh, there's a, the animation that the material animation doesn't work in this context. It works fine for a mobile phone. So let's do a page route builder instead. And this uh, is going to be page builder. It's a required method. So uh, a page route builder um, just takes a few extra parameters like the animation. Um, secondary animation is what gets played when some another route gets put on top of your route, your this route. Um, anyway, click on that. There we go. So we just instantly change screens. Um, if you wanted to, just to show you how you do custom animations briefly, and that is you can override um, 
the transition builder function, which has exactly the same parameters. And this is about the reason we had two methods is about rebuild because it knows when animating it only needs to call this one so the page doesn't have to rebuild its optimization. But here, our transition builder, we can say returns. Um, why is it complaining? Because it doesn't return a widget yet. Oh, because we did the child. Yeah. Um, and here we return, uh, we could return a fade transition, uh, animation of child. And essentially that's that's all you need to do. So so the, the routes duration, everything's already, you know, animation stuff is already in as part of this animation. We're just passing that across and then uh, passing across the child. So now when I go between screens, it nicely animates. Yeah. Nice. Done. Anyway, so uh, moving on to the actual goods. So when we click on this, we want to present the avatar in the screen here. I think we'll use the same sort of orange border just for sake of it, and then be able to reposition the image, right? And and transform. Yeah. The image. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So I think uh, we we'll want a aspect ratio. Oh, so, come on. Hard. An aspect ratio will ensure that it is square, aka a circle, not an oval. Um, now we want to um, stack a photo view. Um, I guess we want to, yeah, yeah. Let's let's stack a a photo view. Is that the zoomable one? Yeah, this is the zoomable editable one and then on top of right. that we'll want our our um a box decoration a box uh a decorated box with a box decoration um with a circle of our circular border that matches we'll come back to that uh, in a second yeah. that'll be uh border now it's complete why why is it because child was mentioned that's me yeah Fingers. Both of you isn't defined yet. Import. Now what? Image provider. Okay, we can do an image provider. So image provider is going to be an asset image. And um, obviously we could just. So I'm doing this as an example of an asset, but you could just pass a URL through. You could do whatever you want. There's plenty of ways of getting data and moving data around your app. I'm not even going to talk about this. This is about Flutter specifics, right? Assets profile. Um, I have to talk about those you if anyone's got a question. Right. Tap on it. Here we go. Now that's a good question. It's there, but I'm clicking and nothing's happening. So do we need to uh -oh. enable? Do we need to enable features? I have no idea. Should we should we go look at the README? That would be helpful, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, it's cheating reading the documentation. You should be looking at the source. Just right. click on it. Look at this. This is kind of interesting because, like, according to that, you just stick it in and it works. Yeah. Hmm. So am I missing something here? Maybe something's yeah, intercepting the uh, the tap. Maybe something's got your pointer. I wonder if I need to specify a controller, and it's I thought it was optional, right? Limited mm. scale, all sorts of other things. I mean, of course, really the cool. initial example is you just give it an image provider. But isn't your uh, border box above the top of the uh, image intercepting it? You are correct. Uh, I think that's it. Ignore pointer. So this is the people. Yeah. Ask, What's the use of this widget? This is the use for it. I don't want right. my my decorated boxes on top to to. to yep. Let's see. No. Oh, uh, so close. Tended. So close. Such an idea. Right, let's, why would that not? Right, let's 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 I mean let's diagnose this right. So uh, let's go into our inspector here and turn on borders. We need a gesture arena debugger. Yeah, <laughs> there is actually is like I think there is like a like you can turn on like touch. Do you know it's been so long since I had to do that. I can't even remember how you do it. I feel I think there's like yeah. a um, in, in the dev tool somewhere. I'm pretty sure that there's a like. Debug something, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, Gesture Arena. 
slow animations widget mode um, i think there is like but you know it's been so long that doesn't matter the, the it just might be i desktop specific or it could be the way i'm using mouse so what is going on here with this i don't know why this border is changing the size i don't know what that is that's, that's um yeah, wait. Let's let's remove let's remove anything that might be uh, causes some issues here. So let's remove these two, and then wrap out. Ah, you know what? It might maybe let's just put fit back fit expand both as big as we can. Okay, so now the black is actually part of the imagery, but still I can't click and drag. Mm. I wonder if the the enable rotation false. Mm. I mean, there's no like, enable scaling, initial scale, max scale, min scale. I mean, we could try it. Let's just do initial scale 1.0, scale 3, min scale 0 0.5. I don't know. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, ooh. Oh, hello. Whoa, <laughs> drag it everywhere. No, but if I if I make it smaller, I can pan it around. Okay. I think the problem here is I don't have two fingers, right? Okay. I think the gesture is completely it's scroll, lost. It's, it's scroll wheel up and down should work. No. If scroll wheel, no. No, okay. no, no. So because I'm with, mm. like, that doesn't come across like, so I think, the key here is image view, a uh, photo view is not supporting the, the desktop uh, yeah. input. So let's gesture. If anybody in the chat process. has an idea, we're listening. <laughs> we'll take uh, questions from the chat, solve it. <laughs> disable gestures, remove gesture detector if true. Useful when using custom detectors. So uh -oh. I can just go make a custom uh, thing for this, but I don't really want to. And then <laughs> um, it kind of just goes off of what we're trying to actually do. Custom right, control, control mouse. How about this? Yeah, I just tried all those kind of shift control. Okay. Like it's not that because like they're that's down to this particular thing. Like like scroll wheel is supported by Windows the the desktop interface, and it will just send it through. Um, yeah, I feel like control mouse click or or right mouse button or some combination of these should work, right? Um, Can you run it in work, an emulator? It definitely work on Android. I just don't want to uh, just deal with it. Set up an and do an Android emulator right now, and anything else is just yeah, more okay. resources. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what we'll do. Um, do I want to do this? Widnose is a great. Why, why do I have a windows? Let, let's 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 see. Yeah, um, so close, so close. I have a, I have an idea. Let, let's have a quick look here. Um, yeah. Photo scale controller. So a quick look through here. So this is the scale state, previous state, uh, covering the zoom, so on and so forth. Sure. Um, so set get style scale set scale state. Okay. It's an enum. Is there a scale value then, or is this the state? This is the state controller. Is it a laptop with a touchpad? But you've already tried all the gestures on your touchpad. Yeah, right? and, and it's not. It's I don't have a touch info on this, so. Oh, okay. okay. No, I'm more considering thinking what I can do is um, it's got a parameter to disable the gestures. I can just wrap a gesture detector that does my what I want. Um, and then, uh, and yeah, someone else just said, can you use interactive view? We can try that for sure. Uh, it saves having a separate library for sure. Um, now I think we can disable the gestures and then wrap it in a gesture detector. And then if we can inject into the controller, the scale, then we've now just essentially taken over, um, yeah. Yeah. The, the handling of scale, which is fine. That, that works. So that's what all I was thinking, but it kind of, yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose of this. Let's see what, what does interactive uh, viewer give us? Um, would that actually work on desktop? I mean, let's give it a go. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's just aren't desktop friendly right now. 
Right. Right. Let's do this. What we're doing. Click. Oh, I certainly can't pan and move that. I'm guessing because this doesn't really have a fixed size so that's bigger. So the size box. And give it a of right. I can't be sight on the point here. Well, I didn't want it. Why didn't that work? What did I do wrong? Boundary margin, pan access free. Sure. Aligned. Constrained. True. Max scale. Scale factor. Scale enabled. So pan enabled, scale enabled. So I'm guessing uh, that's enough constrained. It'll be unbounded constraints being passed down, which is fine. Well, let's do what I want. Yay. Okay, so I can pan around. Is there? Oh, look, scroll works. Look. Woo. Ah, it's just not All mapped right. correctly I, on I, the I photo to, viewer. Um, I talked to Helen about fixing this package. This won't do. Ah. Right. So anyway, file let's do bug. This. File an issue. So this, this, this does exactly what we wanted to do, so that's fine. So, um, ah, okay. Well, for what we need, this will this will do what we need to do right now. Um, and then we want a border on top. Let's get let's get to that. Yeah, point. we got to draw the draw the circle on top of it now. Yep. Yep. So uh, border, and and we'll have spent an hour recreating what's available <laughs> as a simple plugin for your React website. Sure. I mean, there's probably packages for this, right? But people ask me how you do it. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's probably already packaged it as this uh, um, in dark. Yes. Do you want me to look for that while you're doing this? This will be fun. Not really. Fun. <laughs> um, right. Let's get rid of this. Let's make some more room. Right. Where are we? What are we doing? Big brackets. Okay. Okay. So let's let's make it natural size. Let's find out. Keep on recycling. That's okay. okay. So that's interesting because 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 yes, it's going to be center and then aspect ratio. Well, it's certainly better. It's because the natural size doesn't fit. So the default is the default scale not 1.0. Do you think it would be? I'm guessing I think I know I know what this is. Image. Standard, um, the standard uh, fit on an image is not. Um, no. All right, we'll come back to that in a second. Let's let's concentrate on what we're actually trying to do here. So, um, we're going to make this smaller anyway. So let's do that. So wrap this in a. Center a whole stack in this rather than this piece. Um, mm. 
Michael asked this question. I don't know if you're answering that yet. If you clicked on the zoomed pan image, can you translate back to the original image XY? Um, Probably. Can you elaborate? So, yes. If you clicked on the zoom, oh, you mean like where you clicked on a zoom pan image? Can you There's got to be back? ways to do that. There has to. Well, no, you can. I mean, you just you just do an invert. You to take the matrix and do an inverse matrix. Take your x y from your outside corners. You get the zoomed in coordinates, and that would be where it is in relation to the original image. I mean, that that there's plenty of ways of doing it. So perhaps a, um, uh, there's a clarification that can happen there. Sorry. Um, right. Let's do a padding here. Let's say I don't know. Right. Click. Yeah, do that, by default, we're not. Um, let's do wrap, wrap this in there. That's kind of cool. It's getting there. You can zoom in on his eyes or one eye. Yeah, I guess. I mean, like, this is this is kind of getting into where we want to be, right? And yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, the annoying thing here is that you know by default we're just doing a a, a fit here and i think we can probably let's, let's, there's a controller right is there a controller for interact you know i hope there is because otherwise this won't work because we need to be able to pass in on interaction start end update i don't want I, I mean i can stack alignment to center um yeah, you're not wrong, Med. That is correct. That would solve that. Um, let's let's get rid of that clip for a second here. They're meant to expand though. I don't think this would solve this because the problem with the original one is that the image itself it doesn't fit the the content of our display. So if I make this bigger, you see that the scale of the original image is not. So all that was happening was this. And that's just because the one-to-one -one scale of the content inside the interactive viewer does not scale to fit the content, right? And uh, so I could leave it like this, this is fine. But what we really want to do is give it a default, which does a, a fit, right? Which is the mm -hmm. one, which is this actually. But I don't know why when I started up, See, I zoom out and I get that. I think that's a plug-in interactive viewer, at least on desktop. Again, position.fill does not solve this. There's no problem here. Interactive viewer is filling the stack, right? First of all, stack fit expand ensures that. Second of all, um, it's the fact that it's the way that interactive viewer is designed to work. It's meant to move it around and size it, right? So right. Just answer the questions here in the chat. Um, and the annoying thing right now is that we, although we can get gesture callbacks, it's still not going to solve this. So I think the point here, I think, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to completely build a photo viewer here, but I think the easiest way to solve this is just eliminate these problems, right? So, <laughs> like, li by literally eliminating them, right? So here's how we're going to do this: we're going to say we're going to do a transform on our image. And let's make our picker stateful. We're gonna need to do this anyway, like have a make the statement, have a state. Um, but what we're gonna do is have a matrix that we supply in. So we'll say particle matrix and call it transform. Um, and we initialize, um, we could pack it, get that passed in. We'll, we'll come back into passive uh, matrix. We'll come back to a minute. For now, we'll set transform to equal matrix for dot identity, which is a standard matrix does nothing. Essentially, it's called the identity matrix. Um, and we'll pass that over to our transform. And click on it. Does nothing. This is what we want. Um, so this is this is curious, right? Is that because I removed contain from this? Probably. The scale get is. I thought contain was the default one. Hmm. Yeah, 
Apparently not. Okay, good. This is what I want. This is the behavior I want. Now, what we want to do is have it so that when we interact with our image, um, interact with our image, we can uh, adjust our uh, transformation matrix. And now if I make this Hey, I'm going to show something that a lot of people don't actually know. So why not? Let, let, let's let's do that. That might be fun. Those are always good. These are always fun ones. It's not strictly how I'd like to do this. I might like abstract it away a different different way, but it's it's cool to to, to show something off. So let me just first of all, let me just get these drag functions in. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So cool. Um, let me. Um, on drag start on pan start on pan. Oh. And uh, on pan update. Um. Pantle is actually quite an important one to implement. I'm not going to bother reading that now, but that's if uh, another gesture takes control from the way from the current gesture. It cancels the previous one. So that's the same as normally up or, 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 or finishing your thing. I'm not going to bother with it right now for this. But um, if you're doing your custom gestures, always ensure you do cancel. Um, on pan end, because you, you otherwise your gestures continue and you don't realize they should have ended or you get some weird right. behavior. It's, it's interesting because essentially you're watching a, a state machine, but you don't, if you don't pay attention to all the state transitions, you might miss what state the state machine is in. Should just be able to read out the state machine status, which but I don't think there's an interface for that. Oh, you, you, can probably need raw, you can actually do that. You can do yeah. that using a raw gesture detector, and you implement. Uh, you can actually imp go one level deeper into the gestures, but yeah, right. right, right. Okay. Yes. No. No. For another show. So. Um, I was going to say a little hack. So what I want to do is when these when I pan, when these pan callbacks get called, so I'm actually panning around and do the gesture of panning, I want to update this transform. And then that for that will update the display of our image and be transformed as such. Now, normally, I don't want to rebuild the entire widget. Now, this is, I mean, there's nothing here to warrant, warrant really doing this, but I want to show you this technique. Um, and that's called a stateful builder. Ah, stateful builder, pop that in, and you get a builder function come back, and you return your widgets that you would do normally. But this is a comment, this is one that people don't use that very often. Now, the second parameter is it's expanded in my IDE there for annoyingly, but it's actually a state setter. Um, so this has expanded state setter. And up here, I can actually store that and say state setter, I don't know, uh, set transform or apply, apply transform. Yeah, apply transform. And then when this widget gets built, we store that callback. That's how it works. Now, what's going to happen is if I run apply transform, it will actually just rebuild just this stateful builder. Right. And that's, cool. how, that's how stateful builder works. It's not commonly used. It has some practical uses, but a lot of the time people just make a stateful widget. Um, yep. there's, some, there's some good and bad things to doing it either way. In this case, I only want to rebuild what's inside, not the trajectory detect and all this other stuff. So this works nice and simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Then here I do apply transform and it's a set state function. Uh, just the way you normally do set state, right? And I can say transform equals whatever, right? So if I can summarize, a stateful builder is to a builder what a stateful widget is to a uh, stateless widget. 
Yes. Yeah. So it's basically just adding state to something that we already understand from other ways. Like we all know what builders do. State for builders, just that plus state. So we want to get um, the local. So, so first of all, we want to know how much has been moved, how much the mouse has been moved. And that tells us how much we need to change the transform to move it, right? So um, what we do is we say transform dot maybe set translation. And what's an X, Y, Z? We're not doing the Z axis, so that's zero, zero. Um, and then the X and Y is what we want to set. I mean, get the X and Y from the details coming in. But this gives us um, this gives us the um, the delta, which is currently what's changed, or the global position and local position. So the, the two ways of handling mouse input here. Um, global is reference to the entire um, screen, more or less. I won't go into the details of what how, can change this a little bit. And then local is to the widget only. Yeah. So um, and that can also go into negative. So if you drag the mouse outside, it'll go negative ten in local coordinates, right? Or yeah, whatever. Wow. Right. Just explain. Like it's they're just relative. It's just how local is relative to your widget. Global is relative to the straight to the layer, but to the to the screen, right? Then um, the delta is just the thing that's changed. So if we so ideally, if we continue to apply delta correctly. Um, that will just work or at the very beginning on pan start we can record the local position where the person started record the local position on the update minus them away from each other and then you get the the difference from their start position and set that on the matrix there's a, a few different ways in this right now I, i'm thinking of a simple way of doing this is to uh, is to do uh, i'm wondering matrix, matrix multiplication might work so if we could do transform this matrix um Transpose, no, uh, transpose multiply. No. Surely I can, hang on. Uh, plus equals matrix form. Let's just see what happens with this. It can, it can only go wrong. It can only go wrong. Dot. Mm. Uh, columns. Skew translation values. That's what I want. Um, so I'm thinking if I do delta details delta. Yeah, yeah, dy. I don't know. Let's find out. Hmm. Oh, Only a matter of code. It is actually moving by a few pixels, but. It's not mm, math is wrong. Applied. I think that's yay, it worked. Yay, cool, nice awesome. Yeah, so, so again, look, can you I'm zoom just, too? Can you zoom? Uh, so, or... zooming is slightly different. So, that's okay. where so this is. This is going to be just this right now. Hang on, okay, I'm and then what clip I'm going to do. Now. Um, so when you when you when you scroll your mouse, um, there's no like so on scale start is the default. And I don't think this is going to get called. So, but let's just find out. Uh, let's just do a function here. D. Scale started. Now start. I don't think this is going to get called because the way this works by default, the scale gesture is two fingers. Having both a pan gesture and a scale gesture recognize it is redundant. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Thanks very much. Um, that's because on pan start um, gets called with scale as well. Like you actually get. No, no, it's the scale gesture. Sorry, the scale gesture gives you pan information. So you change this to on scale start. Um, and then this would be. Scale start details. Um, let's see. Uh, print. Let's not use the other one. Scale start details. Um, actually, we need to change this to scale update. Don't care the name. Ah, uh, annoyingly. Oh, 
poke my point down to the top. And M because I guess. Okay, no well. Um I'm just flipping over to the scale called racks, which gives you as the focal point, which is the same as pan. Um, I'm not going to change the name of them right now because I don't think we can actually use these. Let's try this again. Restart, click. Panning still works. Uh, and the idea is that um, if we go back to console, we get the scale start, the offset here. But how? But how do I? How do I zoom in? Right? Like there's nothing here. Mm. I can hold down mm. buttons, but the ID doesn't doesn't see anything different with me. Like it just sees it as I'm trying to drag, right? With one pointer down, and this is the difference. Like on two pointers, you might scale it, right? So, what we actually want to do is we're going to go back to for desktop. This is, and this is what's missing from that other package. Um, by default, this would be what most do. Let's go back to um, let's go back to on scale start. Uh, sorry, on pan start. We don't trick me to all of these, but we only need to update. But the mm -hmm. point here is um, I want to scroll my mouse wheel and have that zoom in, zoom out. So there is no on, you know, on on zoom or like on mouse scroll or anything like that, right? So the way you work mm -hmm. this is another widget. Very rarely use widget called listener. Ooh. And a listener is a painfully named widget. I have to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, 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 it listens to only like mouse of it, input events. Like it that's literally it? is, that's all it is about like, handling that kind of callback to common pointer events. It's a really oh. badly named widget, if I'm honest with you. Horrible. Uh, I don't like it at all, but it's. Uh, I think, if I'm honest with you, I would I would be the one rooting for it to be renamed, and and blast all the other people that have a problem with that. <laughs> you know. Um, so it has it has nothing to do with like streamed out listen. No, nothing. No, and nothing, they not that listen, listen at all. It's just it's not only that. related to touch and input events, and it's like completely. That's silly! Like, it, what a horrible yeah. name! What a horrible so, name! Yes, I'm, I'm about with at, you. Suggestion to actually use a list. We'll get pitchforks. We'll get pitchforks. We'll store these them. The raw, view. Yeah, these are the raw <laughs> events that gesture can listen to. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even sure. I'm going to check this actually. Just think about it. Um, I, you have um, uh, you have all the inbuilt gestures. I don't think there is like scroll wheel gesture or anything like that. Um, although there could be. If probably Flutter could... 4 doesn't fix this, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> um, one or four better do this so actually there's something that that could be added right there's a there's a good pr a scroll <laughs> gesture right i'm thinking about this because it is okay. something i always end up doing so it's on point to signal mm -hmm. and um this is where you get like the extra events from from a, a, a pointer event and uh, yeah. this would be like um scroll wheel or uh, if you're using a uh uh, a stylus, it would be the buttons and the stylus, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, all we do is add in an on pointer signal handler, right? And then we can get to uh, and those lovely events. Um, yeah. And then you're going to update the state, which will automatically update the view. Yeah. That sort of stuff. Cool. So cool. Um, listener oh man now i'm mad now you may be mad it's <laughs> that misnamed of a has it, has, has it got under your skin has it, it has it has <laughs> it's like we're, we're trying we're out here we're talking to people we're trying to get things to work for them and now we have to say now bring out listener yeah. no no that's just wrong all right so pan and then if i scroll my scroll wheel Oh look, transform pointer, transform pointer scroll event, and yes. there's position and scroll delta there. So that's interesting. Nice. So, um, nice. uh, yeah. So basically, when we get one of these, we then need to um, take out event. So this would be a 
point to scroll event, I think you can say if event is to scroll event. Now we can access the parameters, scroll delta, and all this kind of fun stuff. Distance max, distance min, um, size. So I don't know, let's just print some of these off. I have no idea if it's going to give us any values that we need. Like, I think we're going to have to do this ourselves. But let's just say, I don't know. Uh, it would so. be remarkable if Flutter Forward was strictly to announce that they fixed the name of listener. <laughs> it would be like, that's all they did. No, 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 that's the entire event. <laughs> the entire event. Yes, we we heard your feedback. We're now, we're now fixing this thing. We're <laughs> All right. So yeah, I don't sorry it wasn't backward compatible with all that old code you wrote, but hey, we're moving forward <laughs> with listener. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward so, to it now. Yeah, this is this is not uh this hasn't done anything here. So what oh, I think what no. we need to do is when we receive the event, we need to know is um is it a positive or a negative vertical scroll right yeah so if yeah. An event is, go bigger or smaller yeah if the scroll delta dy is less than zero then we're going we could say zoom in Did anyone find well, this that makes it bigger that makes it bigger when you're going down then feel free know. to give feedback in the chat if if, if. <laughs> yeah yeah besides the Besides a laugh out loud based in it, in it all, I yeah. get you. I, right. I'm right there with you. So, <laughs> so right with uh, you. scroll in, zoom in, scroll up, out, zoom out. Perfect. This is exactly what I want. So now, ah, ah, we're getting close. We're getting close. We're getting there. So, zoom yes. in, zoom out. That's me moving my mouse wheel and it's responding how I expect. So now, what we need to do <laughs> is say when we when we, we want to alter our transformation matrix and apply it based on that. So we pop this oh, in here. Oh, you can do deltas on deltas. Say, nice. Zoom in. If that's like that. And then in this mm -hmm. case, we want to apply a scale. Oh. Uh, it's actually, it's annoying what it's called. It's not called scale. There's other things like scale. No, this is called diagonal. <laughs> just, yeah just another irksome thing for me anyway um so by default it'd be 1.0 um in all three axes right that'd be no scale whatsoever but we're so so this should do nothing this is a multiplier so this actually might do something but we'll find out no nope. scroll does nothing good so now if i put this to 1.5 as soon as i scroll my wheel it's got to be huge quickly yeah yeah <laughs> Woo. yeah okay right. 1.5 is a lot no but it's doing 1.5 each time i scroll right right so what we want to do is apply a so if we want to scroll down we scroll one we, we apply a ratio less than one and if we want to zoom in we scroll one more than more than one right I bet not so, more than one percent probably it's like 0.99 no, exactly. and small one. marginal amount so we'll have We'll call this what zoom factor. Yeah. And it would be uh if it's zoom in, then it's gonna be uh 1.01 yeah. and maybe 1.05. Let's just see how that goes. And then when you zoom out, it'd be 0 0.95. Yep. And then we're gonna leave um leave that at one. I don't want to change player on the z-axis. So scroll in, scroll Ooh. out. Ooh, ooh, almost the right numbers right there. Look at that. Right. I could now if you I notice, could see just a little smaller, a little smaller step, like 1.02. What maybe. we could do what half of that? Yeah, half of that, I so, think. So the other thing to mention is that what we're also doing here is an instant instantaneous step, right? So when I move this, that's yeah. instantaneous. When I scroll my mouse. My, my mouse wheel is is scrolling in in discrete units but and so therefore so is the zoom yeah however what we could do is animate to these values but that's another completely different thing altogether we're not building a photo viewing library here right yeah uh, I, I was just making sure they had enough resolution to be able to really position your avatar though that's why I uh, it's, quite, it's fine step. for what we need right now um yeah, that looks good. I, I also looks want good, this though. to 
to treat the scroll event as uh, opaque. So um, that's because we're missing a hit test behavior. Um, so I can actually, I can zoom and not be entirely on the image. That's what the opaque thing is going to do for us. So if I zoom out and then zoom in here, it still works, even when I'm not on top of the strict on top of the image, but I'm on top of the widget, right? Okay. Yep. So, so if you notice now, it's zooming in and zooming out from the top left. Well, that's no good. We want it to zoom and zoom out from where the mouse is. Yeah, the origin. How do you get the origin so set to the mouse? Get, if you remember rightly, and we'll just have to try this out now because uh, I, I, I missed that when I was just doing this. We'll say scroll. I think the event had a position here, right? Local position in the widget, right? Let's see. Mm -hmm. So here he is. If I scroll from the top left, 144 six, you scroll from the bottom right, 390, 370. Yep. Perfect. So we want to uh, use this position to indicate where we want to scroll from. So we do that by also doing another matrix. My, uh, my matrix math is terrible. So I'm going to use a pose, which kind of does it all for us. So we do a vector three, which has our uh, a vector three, which has our uh, say event local position dx event local. Y, uh, zero uh, yeah zero scale quaternion quaternion identity. I'll pull these in just a second, and then I'll explain it. It's a bit of code mm -hmm. in there. And then another vector three for the scale, which has the three parameters we had from before. It's going to actually, does it actually tell us what it does in here? Uh, set translation, rotation, scale. So this dot scale after set from translation, rotation. We might be able to do set, make a matrix. Maybe it might mm. make this slightly simpler and say set translation and then scale it. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's try, let's try that. That might be a bit better than mm. so these these I can import these. It's a vector the vector library, vector math library, but I, it's more hassle. I don't want to deal with right now. So if I do yeah. a matrix four and then we do dot dot set translation raw, that then we can pass in these three values. And then uh, dot dot scale apply our scale numbers in. That should replicate what that original was doing. And this should be uh, identity, start off with the identity constructor. I think sounds about right. Let's see what happens. Click, move around, that still works. Zoom in. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh, no. Don't do that. You zoomed. Um, <laughs> That's interesting. So the question here is, is that one of those things where you need to you know, did that actually start with a zero matrix or did the matrix now? Zero. zero. So just for the audience at home, let me fill in a little bit here. When you do something like a scale or a rotation, it's also important what you consider to be the zero, zero point because a rotation will be around that point and a scale will scale everything relative to that point. So that's often why we reset the zero, zero point when we're doing paint operations with a custom painter. We'll set the zero, zero to something like the center of the image or the center of the painted area. And we'll do our transformations and things like that based on top of that because it makes a lot more sense. Like if you're drawing the hands of a clock, you would set the zero, zero to the center of the clock, and then you could rotate around the outside of it to put your hands. I there. think my brain just clicked on what I'm doing wrong here. Hang on. Ah, good. Maybe maybe what I was talking about helped. Maybe Actually, did. I don't know. Ah, so, good. so, so first of all, um, question, question in my mind was, if this matrix has been applied, is 1.0 on the X and Y 100% of the width and the height of the view, you would think? So what is the, see that, that's, 
that's still if I make this zero, it should just be applying the scout factor then. So this is scale is applying is scaling the current matrix. So that's scaling the matrix, which is not the same as setting the diagonal. Set back. Splat diagonal. Uh, sure. Let's let's splat the diagonal with the same value. Oh. Oh, that's not That's totally not what I was expecting to happen. All right, let's anyway. Let's, so to the point here is: Do you remember when you want to, you want to scale from a certain point? You have to translate scale, and then untranslate, because otherwise, yeah. all drawing thereafter is going to be translated by that amount. Right. Yeah. It's it's kind of like or you have to you have to box it in. It's it's like again with custom paint you. You you start uh, you save your canvas you do some stuff then you pop the canvas to be able to get back to the original coordinates before you did your operation. So this creates a a translation matrix. So I think this is going to be really horrible, but I think it might do what I want it to do. Yep. Let's find out. It can only go wrong. So first of all, if I do a matrix diagonal with our, oops. I think we could probably change our scale factors as well, but you know, I'm not gonna go fiddling right now. Diagonal. I appreciate those of you who are sticking with us. This is probably one of our longer shows. Maybe hopefully we'll set the record for the longest <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah. But Simon's on a roll, so let's keep rolling with it. Yeah. I think are people interested. If people aren't interested, well, like, yeah, <laughs> but they're still here. Oh, yeah. They would have. They would have been not interested. Well, I think. Yeah, maybe they forgot and just walked away from their terminal. Right. They're just. They're, you're, we're on because it's, we're we're keeping the cat I, entertained or something. <laughs> I'm I'm very confused right now. Mm. This is but scary. Before I did this, I'm yeah, my work and I'm. I saw it. That worked fine. Yeah. So why would it not work fine now? What have we, what have I changed? Hang on. Let's change this to zero zero. You do not yeah, return no, the exactly. original translate. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's the thing we're just talking about. Right. And, and thank you, Marco. You know, thank you for still being here. Yeah. Um. All right, I'm gonna let's take this back. Let's take this back. What did I change? I did something. Hey, the computer guy. Right. Yeah. What did I do? Let's take it back. All the way back. Before we did this. And this is when it was working, before I did all this interesting stuff. If only you had that in Git, yes. <laughs> right, that restart was working. Okay, it's working again. Okay. Okay, I copy and paste it. I want to know what the hell changed. Uh huh. Nothing. Because I had Zoom Factor here, Zoom Factor here. Is it because that was zero? Is that is that? I want to see this because that that completely went mess in my head. I want to know if that is it because this was zero because that's the only thing I can think of that would actually be a difference there. Yes. <laughs> okay. Was done. It? Yeah, I scaled my. Basically, what happened there? It applied. It set the scale matrix. It set the scale of the. It basically reduced the scale to zero on the Z axis, which basically meant oh, it that, didn't that's, exist anymore. It, it put it in a flat land, which we can't yeah, see. It put it in flat land, basically, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. well, good to know. That's what was going wrong. Now, what I'm thinking we do is do a matrix. 
pole. <laughs> I'd go, but my cat is super interested. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, all right, translate by none on that access. And then we'll take our local position and make that value. Uh, scroll up. No, no, pause. pause. And, and Simon, pause I don't know if this helps. Pause why. Does this uh, help set, set entry? Yeah, no, it doesn't. But I know what you're talking about. It's like just, just, okay. just. Which okay. it works. Um, let me just see if this is going to do what I want it to do in an expected way. I oh, know. If it doesn't, well, there is actually a couple of functions in in the fucker framework that do this. I might go look and see what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, just, just <laughs> right. To try and carry my sanity. Um, Hey! Wow. Whoa! Whoa! Oh man! Almost. Uh, it's it's not is zooming it, with relative it, to your cursor. But it's it moving is zooming. towards my cursor. Mm. Yeah, that, that's zooming relative. It's relative to different points somehow, but it's not where your cursor is. So maybe that's a local coordinate problem. I think it's the question here is. Is it because this is pre-scaled then? Mm. Yeah. There's another thing you can do where you can just... Yeah, that's, that's totally off. I don't know. It's good enough for what I want right now. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. We don't want to waste everyone's time. See, that is actually like zooming like relative to the bottom left corner, but these these okay. I'm not taking into account something there. Hmm. Sorry, I just noticed the dragging here now is a lot slower because it's applying the transformation. It's, it is applying the translation values, but these aren't. These are these are um, not pre-scaled. So these aren't to, the, oh. to what you see on the screen because the, oh. because the image has been scaled. So now I need to take the scale from the current transform. Um, Do I want to try oh, ask a question? Do then do I want to transform those current coordinates? Do you know what? I'm not going to worry too much because I want the, the hydro head there is to actually achieve something completely different. So right. um, we're going to assume that this works right now, and that is we're applying a transform, we're moving something around, and then the idea is essentially we're taking that portion that's then visible and applying it, right? Let's get to that point. Yeah. We can come back to this if we want to and fill around with people want to. So we don't need on pan end and we don't need on pan start. We need update and pointer signal right now for desktop. Um, do I want to? Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so back to here. So, what we can now do is, along with, um, if we go back up to the top, we can have a class called. I don't know, with our image data, have our um, this would be like URL in this case, it's going to be an asset path because I'm using an asset, obviously, that would make sense in a final product. Um, and then uh, we want a matrix for transform. When the app starts up, we'll, we'll give it a um, I mean, you would put this in the back end of your app. I don't really have one here, so I think mm -hmm. we'll just chuck this in, um, in Avatar app. Why not? We'll call it um, 
profile image name and it's profile image it's pass it in actually uh, so we'll set this is a make profile make profile data and then the init state profile image data um, widget And always remember, super init state goes first. First. Yeah. And super dispose, dispose goes last. Yeah, last. Last. Yep. Important rules. In the absence right. of rules, it doesn't matter. Although I usually call super at the top. Yeah. And, everything. and you know, what happens, you start refactoring and then you'll cause you problems if you don't do this. So, yeah. yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Do it. And break. <laughs> do it. Do it now. I just said do it we now. Have, we have both <laughs> we have both been burned by this. It's obvious. We have scars to show. <laughs> I have the scars to prove it. Um mm -hmm. right, asset path. So that's gonna be uh assets profile.png and our matrix that we're gonna start up with. Obviously, you could save this, whatever you want to do, and it's gonna be identity. Um, instead of using a matrix, a matrix is a common practice, right? And I think it makes sense to use a matrix because it gives you the most flexibility in terms of display. But you can also store the X, the Y, and the scale, how much zoom, that kind of thing, and then apply those individually if you wanted to. I just it doesn't seem practical to me, but you know, whatever you want to do, it's your app. Yep. So here we go. So we, when the app starts up, we're going to create a profile image there with a profile wherever it is. And our matrix, we're going to obviously we don't have one to begin with, so we're going to use matrix for identity. Um, and then over here, um, mm. when we display our profile screen, we obviously want to display it in the button. So rather than getting the profile image day and passing it through, um, yeah, yeah, it would be Christian. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, it's I always like possible that? to write tests. It's always possible to write <laughs> tests, whether right they now. work or not. Uh, no, this, no. How many hours are we going on now? No. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, we're, uh, we're three we and a half hours. Um, again, if this is something that people are interested in, then we could continue next next, next week. I have a feeling next week is going to be special, but the week after, yeah. we could probably uh, continue to do tests if people are interested in doing that, right? So The, and, and, the and, minnow. The minnow got lost in less time than we've been on the air right now. Exactly, right? The, the right, minnow so got let, lost. Let's get back to this. <laughs> Three-hour <Let's> tour. <laughs> so so avatar app, I'm going to do um, – make this yeah. – uh, you know, this staple is fine. And we're going to say uh, let's make this not private anymore. Yeah. Avatar app state of build context. Context. And not great state management, but it will do what I want right now. For an example, return context of ancestor state of time. This and that. Now this means I can use after app of up down here in the button. So there's my button. Here it is. So in my button, Sweet. I can say final avatar data equals avatar app of context. So you're simulating a repository here by yeah. simply just having it be data further up your tree and using yeah. inherited widgets. To get to it. That's that's cool. That's cool. Uh, we should we could do a whole show on that. That's, <laughs> right. That's something that's very interesting, and people are always going, "How do I do inherited widget? How do I how do I not have to use provider or riverpod because I'm a little stupid and maybe." I, I want to try it hard, the hard way, please. Uh, we're going to move out glasses, I'm afraid. They're, they're going the way of the dinosaur. No, not glasses. Oh, you should leave that um, in. That was fun. Yeah, I, I, no, I'm just going to. Uh, okay. Right now. So, um, if we restart this, it's going to be exactly the same. So, first of all, we've got our avatar, and um, it's a button. Now, we're trying to render this on the image. Now, as we said earlier, the problem here is we want to transform this, right? So we want to, um, uh, so first of all, asset image is just the, the image provider. 
And down here, it doesn't give us a transform because with height, we get alignment, which applies a transform, but we just don't get the transform lifted up to us. So we need to find out another way that we can do this. So officially, the correct way of doing this, which I'm not going to do because I can't be bothered, um, is actually to use a uh, custom decorator. So mm. you could you provide a decoration to your ink, and then oh, do I do I do I do I bother? Do I bother? I'm thinking about it. Um, so. Um, so a decoration is just literally a paint function. So where is it down here? After all the default stuff you get, create box painter. Uh, when the value change, you get this. And then your box painter has a paint function. There is there, which is where you actually do your painting. And that's where we would transform what we're painting onto the canvas. That's officially how it should be done. Okay. I can't be bothered doing those two classes right now. Oh, God. Yeah. Right, yes, do it. Yes, do it. Like how often how big do you want this example? Blimey. We we have to have we have to have something to entice y'all back to future shows. So this is good. Yeah, you know what? I'm not gonna like it's I know here's, here's, here's a, this is gonna be left as as a exercise for the viewer. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah, our I'm own 17 it. days you of water. Do it when you get your hands on the code after this. All right. So yes, what we're going to do right now to, to, to make this work is a bit, I don't particularly like this, but it's going to, it's going to do the job. We're going to um, basically put a material on top of our um, image uh, and clip the image behind. So it's kind of like a transparent piece of material on top. <laughs> Viewer count drops the zero. Yeah. Because <laughs> he didn't do it. <laughs> Right, so what we're going to do here, this this is the hacky way that a lot of people do this, which is not the correct way. You, you add more layers, you add more widgets, you add more, you know, um, things. But I'm going to do it. Here's how not to do it. Um, <laughs> so we add a stack. Um, and then below this on the stack is actually where we do our image. We can, we can do our transform widget. And that's going to have our avatar... Uh, Avatar data transform, avatar data dot transform, and uh, as transform, and then inside that we're going to have a child, which is our image asset with our avatar data dot. So, uh, and then that was it. Was it fit? I remember to remember we had to put a fit on it, didn't we? Oh, we'll find out if, if we need to. Right. So. Um, so that's underneath, and then on top we put material, and this one has a type. Uh, you'll see this, whenever you see material type transparency, it's got a bad code smell to it. <laughs> There's not many yeah. reasons why you would need to do this, but um, it should do the job. Um, let's see, inkwell, and then um, we want a child. Uh, is this gonna do what I want it to do? We'll find out, expand. Uh, let's find out, everyone. Right, restart. Okay. Okay, so we have our picture. It is behind, mm -hmm. and it has the ripple on top, which is exactly what we want. Um, the gray behind... Where is that gray behind coming from? Uh, so we want a yellow behind. I don't have that. That's a good question, Wayne. Gray. I'm oh that's part of the image. One well, minute, I'm an idiot. That's the image. So um all we want here is a clip. Wrap, wrap this with a clip oval. There we go. So the image is placed behind a transparent piece of material. Uh so that, that material is on top, right? Yep, yep. Not the same thing as the other one and slightly less efficient in terms of overall cost. But it will do the job for now, as simplistic. Now, when we update our profile image, so we've got a couple of options here. When we tap on our, when we tap on our um, avatar listener, we could actually return back the profile image data, and then um, we could just update our local widget, which is fine. But we actually want to update maybe system wide. Maybe there's a few screens that's on that are in the stack behind. So uh, 
when it comes to state management, we now want to change this thing here into a, a um, in this case, a uh, value notifier of this value. And um, notifier. Uh, and then we need to give it a, a default value. Now, I don't want it to be nullable. And um, I think we're always going to have a value. So what we can do is to solve this problem, we do a late. So we do a late final, give it a type, and then declare this down here. And then we can pass over that value. All right, so now we have our value notify. If we go back down to our widget, we use it what we can now do is wrap out is wrap our transform in a value listenable builder oh, come on wow and then the value listable builder of was it profile image data It kind of seems to auto complete if you put generics in first. Hmm. That's definitely a problem. Mm -hmm. Avatar data. And we're going to return our widgets. This, right. So um, we don't need to rebuild our image all the time. It's only the transform. So we can actually pass that over by doing child. That's slightly more efficient. Right? Don't have to keep constructing a new image. Uh, actually, no, we do because the image might change. Let's say they pick an image for me. Um, and then the value here is actually where we're getting the transform stuff from. All right, so now whenever avatar data changes, we're going to uh, rebuild this transformed widget here. We don't have to pass anything back. We could do, we could do an await and make this async and do all that kind of fun stuff. We're gonna change it. We're, we're essentially lifting the setup and bringing it out. So now in our in our picker widget, if we now have a, uh, a picker screen. If we're now at, at underneath our uh, space that thing, we pop that in a column, that expanded. Bottom the screen, we can add a elevated button and on pressed this equals profile image data. And this is where we're pushing the data back up the, the context. This is the uh, current value. Let's say, um, actually, take that current value and store it whilst we're editing it. So when we initialize, I was creating this initial matrix. We're not, instead of pass it in, we're gonna go fetch it. Wow. Oh, yeah. Now that it's somewhat, uh, when it's regionally ac accessible now. And then we'll also put in um, our uh, Well, I'm here. Okay. That's a path I'm going down here. In here. And then we press the button, the bottom is going to say save. And set the value to be a new profile image data based on asset path and transform as a result of all the changes. And then we do navigator of content. Oh. Right. Good start. Click. Move him over, zoom him in. Let's just eyes. Save. Yeah. 
wah, wah, wah. Now, what's happened here? Uh, uh, uh. Now, this actually worked. Oh. So it's what it's done is it's applied this scale and everything else to the size of this. Okay. Because the hmm. offsets that we're doing in here are relative to. Um, so we, our matrix is wrong. Don't get me wrong. Uh, don't get me wrong. The matrix is wrong. Sure. Um, but it is actually being applied. You can see here. So if I bring it down, oh, too far. So it's relative Multiple. to the top left. You see that's there. You go. Um, Multiplying two wrong matrices doesn't make it right. Yeah, exactly right. Um, <laughs> we have learned this one out. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, anyway, um, we're getting there though. Why does it work? We're going to be parking. I swear I just selected padding. Wrap with padding. Enter. Okay, maybe it didn't. Right. I, I don't understand how we're gaining a few people. I wonder if people are coming back going, I wonder if he's still going. Are they still, are they still doing this? I wonder if I've been dinner now. I wonder if they're still going. Um, I went so to my meeting, so I came back. <laughs> what relationship this does this have? So if this is, let's reset this. Right. So that we're assuming matches this, right? Like we've got a density matrix. We're getting it. But this is what we're seeing. So if I move the him left 50% and hit yeah. save, this is not 50% matrix, right? Because the pixel relation relationship yeah, exactly. Yeah, needles right. That's what I'm talking about. You need to normalize the matrix. So at the moment, this this matrix is applying a um, ratio based on um, the number of pixels. Now the problem here is the one we're going to get in is going to be normalized, and we won't have the size up front to denormalize it. It's actually back to the scale that we're working at. So I think the idea here is that we can work in normalized coordinates. So to be clear. What we're talking about is that zero is on the left, one is on the right. Everything is a fraction of basically of 100%, right? So when we talk about these positional values and how we apply the transformation matrix, um, this, trans this is translation, this is translated by pixels, not by, um, Mm. Shoot. I mean, all of this is possible. I just don't want to have to do all the code. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, first of all, would, um, would this be a good place to publish it and see if anybody at home can solve it? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, okay. So, the, the point here, right, is that yeah. we're getting to that point now, but it's like, well, we're doing something that's so custom here. And the widgets aren't built to do this, right? The widgets that we have, so for example, transform is built to translate based on pixel coordinates, right? And now the pixel coordinates of when we're, sorry, my brain just clicked on something that we could do and it's kind of lame, but I think it might fix it. I might do it just to see what happens. Let's see what happens. Should we do it? Should we do it? Let's do it. Okay. Okay. So you have no idea what I'm going to do, but I'm going to show you. So what I'm going to do is take my uh, widget that's in here, my large widget, right? This is this one here, the editing widget. And what we're going to do is force it to be 96 by 96, the same size as the small one. Okay. Bear with me on this fact. So if I say wrap this in a size box make that a uh, size box dot square now this does it doesn't really it, this doesn't solve the problem let me be clear this is just magic um, i'm going is, off screen just for a second i'll be right back i'm listening though so um and then i let's say i uh so now if i click on this it says uh this this is not center aspect ratio uh yeah let me just do another center here for a second whoops so if i now click on this and move him 50 percent and hit save it is correct right if i click on it zoom in position it to just his eyes and hit save it is correct see that that's exactly what we want 
okay now the reason why that's working is because both have the same size same units right 96 and one is 96 and the other so on like zero to 96 okay then what we can do is we can cheat this by doing a wrapping the big one in the fitted box this just basically scales up all operations that are happening inside i think this should do what i want it to do yeah so here we go there's your first problem our border which was the same size that's been drawn inside of our um fitted box is now in scale now we actually don't need the rendering of what's on top in the fit box we only need the gesture detector so if i wrap that in a fitted box give it a give it our square dimension um I think this should do it. Uh, let's find out. This basically means that the border is no longer being scaled along with everything else. Uh, only the gesture detector and the image has been scaled. Okay, so what you see here, <laughs> this is definitely cheating. What you see here okay. is, okay, so what I've done here, and, and if I show you the log, this is funny. So yeah. um, the, the, the sure. So now if I was to show you the pan details, let's do this and say pan b uh, dot local position, b dot yeah, local position. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, this so so basically what i've done uh we, we've totally broken this by the way you only work in one size <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah it just doesn't solve it it just fixes it for the stream right now nice um, nice so, so basically if i move this you'll see the units of where it's being moved to are in the units of 96 by 96 because <laughs> i literally just um I, I, I wrapped our scout just as I said, in a in a 96 square and put it inside a fitted box. A so fitted this box. Is, this, so what this does nice. is this scales up the input gestures as well as the rendering to fit. So <laughs> this is applied a transformation to our inputs along with the rendering to simulate the originating size. So oh. this this although this works is not the correct solution, right? Because it only <laughs> work in, in 96 by 96. No matter yeah. what you do here, this is not the solution, right? However, look, now what I can do is zoom in, right? To let's say yeah. just the eyes, yeah. hit save, and that's what you get on the output. Right? Wow. Wow. It works. So if I now go back into um into here and add in a clip oval, oval, clip, clip oval, should again open it up there we go and we can change our avatar whatever let's do let's do a, a, a big set of lips there you go hit save and that's what you get your avatar right. um so so yeah although that this is a solution it's not the correct solution uh, okay um uh, i i'm just it's got really late now i need to have dinner and with streams are going on way longer than it should so um <laughs> that where we're going to leave this because it's going to take publish the gist right publish now. the gist um so i'm going to publish this to a gist right now if uh, yep. uh if, will i fill in for a second yeah you fill in for a second i'll sort this out so this has been a great show we talked about a lot of good stuff uh one week from today minus two hours minus actually minus four hours uh minus five hours now <laughs> we've been running for so long uh, it's going to be flutter forward. So be sure you tune in if you've got your uh, remote links to go do that or uh, go to your watch parties. If you're going to a watch party, uh, we don't have any of those here in Portland. So it's, I'm, I'm my own watch party for Portland and having to get up at uh, 6 a.m. for that. But that's cool. 6 a.m. is better than uh, 4 a.m. or something. Uh, I, as I said in the middle of the show, I'm doing two events uh uh, following the uh, results of whatever happens next week. So I have no idea what's in the change for my slide deck until it happens. I don't have much inside information. So, uh, but, you know, same stuff you can see. Like I said, it's uh, 
watch the commits. Um, uh, probably the simplest way is to say somehow there's been a lot of commits on a flutter 3.7, which is a weird jump in the numbering scheme. So we don't know what that means. And there already is in the Dart SDK, the change log has the whole bunch of things that were breaking change were breaking changes for Dart 3.0. So you might want to check that out. That's already in the SDK. They're already making patches to that to add features and things to the breaking changes for Dart 3.0. So you can look at those today. Those are in the public in the repos. So that's all I can say about that. I just oh. think. Awesome. Um. Uh, yeah, I mean, if anyone wants to have a play around with that example, we um, and we could we could talk around. Ne uh, probably won't be next. Well, maybe we goes on next week. I feel like next week's going to be completely fast forward related, and all I'm sure it's going to be a lot that. of discussion on um, that. Yeah, but in the meantime, you could, if you want to, if anyone wants to have a play around the code, uh, fork my gist, play around with it, update it, and then fork do hashtag gist. hashtag hub day Q and A on Twitter. And at yep. Flutter.com and at Dev Angels London, and and we'll see and we can respond to it and we can talk about it when we get back. Yeah, um, and I'm in all the usual places. I'll be on Discord, Stack Overflow, Reddit, uh, and uh, Slack. So come find me, come chat with me. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week for Flutter Forward. Yeah, bye bye. Ciao. Bye.